stuff around It's gotta be my imagination I think it's in the face I think it's in the face I think it's in the face They not for real Let's go Who that? 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 Who
So if you have anybody that is needing treatment or someone you want to recommend for treatment or someone that just you. needs a number, yes, if you or if you, treatment. you yourself need this, then yeah, this is the person. And this is the episode to watch. Yeah, we'll be dropping information for folks. We for will real. be... You know, get, giving advice. We will. We won't be. She will be. Yes. So, um, Rebecca, you want to tell us a little something about yourself? Sure. So, um, I'm a treatment specialist. So, what I do is, <clears throat> if you or a loved one are struggling with addiction, if you think you need help, uh, you just call me, and I do what I can to get you into treatment as soon as possible. Okay, nice. and um, we'll be providing those numbers and and suggestions and things like that here. So, but um, so what's up? What's up, B? What you got on the list for today? Um, well, first thing we're gonna talk about is uh, our continued discussion in shitty football teams. Yeah. Oh. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're doing that. Oh yeah, and uh, and special guest co-host on the side on the couch. Mr. Uh, James McVeigh. Yeah, sorry, I didn't introduce yes. myself or anything. I'm yeah. just kind of, I'm kind of hanging out on the side. Yes, <laughs> yes, but he's he's with us. He's with us. So this is gonna be a great episode, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but his team is the Titans. Dun dun dun. And how they do today, James? Not great, B. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Not great. Could have been better. I'm gonna tell you what. Like I've never been in a fist fight. <laughs> on a podcast, but I'm still really hyped up and salty about that game. So like, yeah. you best not talk shit. You're doing yourself yeah. a favor. Yeah, I'm just. Hey, my brother is a is a Titans fan. Um, don't know why. Uh, but you do, don't know why. I I, I don't. I tell you. <laughs> I don't just I don't really know why, but I mean I just found out about my home also. So yeah, well, yeah you can't really. Yeah. My yeah. my boy B. Doesn't know who Patrick Mahomes is. I do. He just found out today. <laughs> so, wow. so okay. I mean, we don't take his awesome. opinion on football. Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. This is this is not a sports podcast. With, with no. a grain of salt. With a grain right. of salt. So, but, what else we got, man? Um, the impeachment of the one Donald Jefferson Trump. Is it middle it's name a, Jefferson? I think it's, is it Donald what up, John Maria? Trump? Thanks for joining John? us. No, I ain't know. I just knew it was a J. I just. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just gave this nigga a middle name? Yeah. Why? Donald Jackson. Oh, Trump. 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 That's really how we do shit now. Uh, we just giving niggas names. Not Jefferson. Though. <laughs> I mean, like Jefferson Davis, like racist ass fucking. See, that that, that yeah, goes right in the line. line you know, Boom. Look oh, at wow. me. Even subconsciously, I'm throwing nice sliders. And yeah. They impeached but, him. Uh, what they did was they they started the inquiry process. They like. They passed rules for it. They had a full house vote. Mm. Uh, they basically laid down the ground rules. We're about to start having open hearings for the same witnesses they've already deposed and whatnot in closed door hearings. So we're going to start seeing all that. That's what's going so on. So this is going to be televised? Uh, oh, like, yeah. This is going to be yeah. an OJ trial type thing. Like, you yeah, can watch uh, on the news. Yeah, I mean, it's the wow. same thing. You know, when C SPAN's going to get a lot of ratings. Oh, God. Wow. Well, I mean, everybody they else will post it, too. I mean, Everybody will post it. Like you can't miss so, it. So everyone's going to have it. So how long do these proceedings you generally take? How like how long of a trial? Uh, well, about? it depends on how much they have to investigate. I would. It's a phone call, right? If you want my well, if you want my prediction, I would say they'll have it wrapped up. Danny Strong says hi, Kim. By the end of the year, at the by latest. The the, at the latest. The latest. Mm. Uh, Danny a lot, of, a lot of people who are pundits are saying maybe by Thanksgiving. Mm. Um, that's about a month from now, but I would think, Ooh. I think by the end of the year, uh, if, if the Democrats want to be cautious, um, they have the votes already in the House if they really wanted to to impeach the man right now. So but you have to keep in mind that impeachment is kind of akin to like uh, a grand jury indictment, right? Right. So you get impeached, that doesn't mean that you're found guilty of anything. It means you've been charged with doing wrong. Ah. And so then it moves over to the Senate, and the Senate holds a trial. 
Mm. So, uh, so with a trial, are we talking possible jail time for Mr. Uh, no, nah, he won't no, ever see he a can't jail. Be charged. Uh, okay, hang on. Yeah. Actually, no. Yes, he can. Uh, that's but the, he won't be. That's the fun part is if he is removed from office. Well, then he can't be. No, if he's yeah, exactly if, if the Senate Senate has to have two thirds of the Senate has to vote to remove him from office. If they do, it automatically opens it up to criminal liability. Immediately. Immediately. All right, so impeachment is not him being kicked out of the office. No, impeachment it's is just it's a, a trial. Start. It's like it's like being indicted. Right. It so if indicted. he's found guilty of the indictment per yeah, se, exactly. then is that automatic removal, or they still have to vote again? Yes. Oh, okay. So the way it works, the House has the power to impeach. It's a right. simple majority vote. So, right. You know, what are there? Uh, Four hundred and thirty-five House members, something like that. Something like that. Uh, uh, uh four. Yeah. It's a four. Uh, anyway. Uh, I can't remember offhand, but um, <laughs> they vote. It's a simple majority vote. If they vote uh, to impeach him, essentially on articles of impeachment, um, it'll go to the Senate. The Senate has to commence a trial after that. So right. there's a there's a trial that happens. Right. Um, the Supreme Court Chief Justice, would be John Roberts, sits at the head of the trial. Um, the House has their own people that will be like prosecutors or whatever. Right. Uh, Trump can bring his own defense team, do whatever. And they're putting on. Oh, evidence. he's gonna. He can bring his own dream oh, team. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's, it's a. It's oh, he a will have a dream yeah. team. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. It's, it's, it's <laughs> a trial. is definitely gonna. I mean, it's basically right. a trial, but at the, at the close of proof of both sides, uh, the Senate votes. If if two thirds of the Senate, essentially sixty seven senators or something like that votes to remove him from office he's removed from office but it also opens him up to criminal liability so he can be prosecuted for crimes he committed in office mm. so uh. do you think the, the senate who is mostly republican if he is found guilty of the impeachment will actually remove him from yeah, office yeah found guilty of an impeachment impeachment is a uh, we just talked about that right if but if he's, he's found impeached. if he's found fucked up and he needs to like and they, and they realize <laughs> if he's found that, fucked what up what you is if the house votes to impeach him boom and then, then it goes to the trial. And it goes to the trial. And then the trial, it takes the worst circumstance. I worst highly, situation. highly doubt he'll be removed from office. They're still just going to hold total um, line for him? Unless, unless the house comes up with some real smoking gun shit that looks yeah. bad, that bad. Mm. But uh, right now... So he can be impeached and still run for uh, president, right? Yeah, unless he's removed from office. If he's removed from office, he can never hold office again in the United States, period. Wow. Yeah, you know, he can't be elected to anything. Yeah. So, At least on the federal level. Uh, I, I actually he might don't know, that, I don't know the answer if he could be like be running. the city dog catcher or something. He might be, <laughs> yeah. but, but you can't you can't hold a federal office again. Right. I wish that would happen. He would just go from president to dog catcher. You know? That would be I'm going to need you to speak up, Ken. I don't want that man being dog catcher. Are you kidding? He'll euthanize every dog he catches. Right. <laughs> he doesn't like dogs. <laughs> dogs die, homie. That like, sounds terrible. He's going to euthanize all the dogs. But, all right, so before the end of the year, we'll know if he is actually impeached. But that doesn't mean that he's not going to be the Republican nominee. That's true. It's the same thing that Bill Clinton went through, right? Right. right. Clinton got impeached. Yeah. Went to the Senate trial. The Senate acquitted him. You know, mm. they, didn't, they, didn't, uh, they didn't convict him. I think the same thing's going to happen here. I mean, realistically, on the numbers, if you're voting down party lines, you I need just 19 that senators my phone. that are Republicans to flip and vote against him. Uh, I don't see that happening. So, uh, I mean, it's, like I said, it, it's wow, really, it's, the it's politics, really bad. dude. So he it's can really be bad, for real really, guilty really on a phone call, record it, kind of slick, admit to doing the shit. And they got him admitting to it. Essentially, go yeah. go to trial. Have all this evidence presented. And they're just like, I'm Republican. I'm not about to do this. Well, I'm sure he'll put up some kind of, I don't know what defense is going to wow. put up, But I'm sure he'll put up something. But This is the legal system. Yeah. So, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, that, that's important to talk about, too. Actually, this is not the legal system. Uh, impeachment is built into the Constitution, but it's a purely political process. Mm. So this is not... He's not, a, he's not on trial right in, like, a court of law for real. Uh, yeah, no, because if he's on trial in a court of law for real... Then that's they, when ju- they, yeah, they jail is this optional. Is, yeah, right. This is a purely political yeah. scene we're, we're seeing. Yeah, exactly. This is, it's a political process. I mean, uh, he, still has, he still has due process rights. 
he still has full criminal procedural rights. Like he has the right not to incriminate himself through the fifth amendment. <laughs> You know, so he has all the perks for that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's the only reason that exists is because he could see jail time out of it. Right. You know, it's kind of the same process. He has the right mm. to go through this procedure. He has the right not to incriminate himself. He has the right to discovery, to know what evidence is going to be presented against him. He's got the right to cross-examine witnesses. You know. So is Nixon the only one that's actually successfully been convicted? In a, by Nixon, Nixon was wasn't. was not convicted at all. Uh, Nixon was never impeached. Nixon so we've never had knew, a for Nixon real deal knew that president he was about B. To be impeached, and he knew he was fucked, so he resigned. Yeah, he did. Okay, so we've never actually had a president <laughs> be we've impeached. Never, we've never be, had we never had a president be impeached and removed. And removed. Yeah, because okay. we had Clinton was impeached, and then uh, was it Andrew Johnson beforehand? Who was who was the president before that in the eighteen hundreds? That was, I think it was I think it was Andrew Johnson. Might have been Andrew Johnson. Uh, we had another president before. Yeah, because he came right after Lincoln. Yes, that sounds, yes. That sounds right. I don't, and we'll lift you on it. But we've had two presidents impeached, but we've never had either one removed. Wow. All right, so this isn't going anywhere, folks. So <laughs> November. <laughs> now that we've fucked off for 18 minutes of nowhere. <laughs> right, guys. Still our president, guys. Yeah. So, um, so what about this cool. shut up and ink, bro? <laughs> um, well, yes, yeah, next week, man, we in there. Shut up and ink at the uh, Revolution Ink Tattoo Studios on yeah. Chelan, uh Columbia, Tennessee. It's gonna be a chilly one. Bring a jacket. It's gonna be a little chilly. Yeah, I little think little. Uh, the high that day is like sixty, and that's gonna be like a good portion of the midday. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. But, like once it gets a little later into the evening, when the performances, uh, but the musical performances really start uh, picking up. It might get a little chilly out there, you know what I mean? Yeah. So make sure you bundle up. It's still going to be very enjoyable for who trucks, right, right, right. Um, the competition. Still the competition. Be going. Pay attention yeah. to the podcast too. You can check out uh, all the behind the scenes, all the live what the uh, artists are doing. We're going to have all that popping in and out throughout the day. So hell yeah, yeah, hell yeah. We can um, post on all that. Yeah, it's going to be dope. So we have uh, Kim, who will be competing. Let me uh let me switch to Kim here. How you doing, Kim? Doing good. How you doing? All right. Hey, could you uh bring the mic a little bit closer to her so we can hear her? There you go. Go ahead, Kim. Cool. Is that better? Yeah, that's much better. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Have you already picked out what you're doing? Yes. Yeah. It's a surprise. Yeah. Don't tell us. The yeah, motherfucker yeah, might jock your shit. Person that you're gonna be tattooing. Yep. Yeah. Ah. Didn't make the cut. Didn't make the cut. Didn't make the cut. I'd imagine as a tattoo artist, I probably if I was gonna compete. I probably wouldn't use no black folks. No, I no, wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah. No offense, no, no offense. No, no, y'all no. understand? You yes, know, come yep. on now. Them tattoos be pop. I'd find the yeah, fairest yeah. white girl oh, I could yeah. find over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. you need a snow look, white. Yes. This is what I color goes to me. Color, hold on. Let's see. see here. Hey, look at. <laughs> showing off color. In it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah, it pops. Yeah, see, that's not gonna work for no, 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 no. no. I mean, we're not carrying purple like that. No, bro. we <laughs> we're not. And I'm not, you know, <laughs> like if I was purple, an artist, man. I'd be like, mm. I'm trying to win, man. All right? <laughs> Any goth chicks want to be there? You, you know? Do that was with like really great black line shading. And Yo, yeah. you could do hey, that. Hey, if a, if somebody brings a, a black contestant to tattoo on. And then wins with it. Yeah, that that's has just to be. Up the channel. You know what? That's that's amazing, yo. Because I wouldn't take a black person. No, hey, no, not, not at all. I'm not no. Yeah, I'm but you know what's this funny though? In this pot. I need everything. I need this to be vibrant and shit. Three of the judges are black. Exactly. Right. <laughs> that's funny yeah. too. We can't get tattooed on, yeah, we but it. we gonna judge. <laughs> yeah, uh, me. Hold on, no. No, no, no. We're not letting them know. Fuck no. All right. All we right. can't let them know. Secret. Well, mm-hmm. I am one of them. I let yeah, that out. me and Brandon. Boom. There it is. <laughs> oh, we over here now. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's some other black person. Yeah, yeah the mi- mystery Negro. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Kim. As a contestant, what is the most like uh, nerve wracking part of it? The time for me personally, the time limit. The, the four hours. Still learning, yeah. Yeah. So it's wanting wanting to do the big picture and 
figuring out how to do that in time. So, so is hours. it from four hours? Do you create the design and then tattoo? No, they can have the design, the design ready. Four hours needle ready. time, if yeah. I understand. It's four so hours needle time. You can do, you know, have it all ready beforehand. Yeah, and yes. yeah you can have, as a tattoo That's artist, big. you can have the the, yeah. the baddest fucking design but if you can't shade and line that bitch yeah, right then that's it matter. you know so we let them go ahead and have their matter. stencil ready okay yeah i had this Needle cold time. ass stencil when i was t used to tattoo yeah and i tattooed myself on my thigh uh -huh. how'd you and, like doing that oh it, it wasn't that bad the one on my foot sucked but on my thigh i didn't know how to do line or shading work oh, I was yeah. going, what the fuck? hell yeah i was <laughs> like man i watched miami ink a thousand times <laughs> right like, I got this shit so down. I'm yeah. James, dude. I got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching Kat Von D. Like, yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah. That yeah. shit. Awful. Is it, is it garbage? It is garbage. It's hot garbage. I'm like curious now. I'm so cold, though. I want you to have It's on. so garbage, bro. It's one of those things, like, I haven't had one person yet just looking at me like, I know what that is. It's always a... <laughs> the what the fuck is that? What's that? What's like, that? who fucked you up? Yeah. <laughs> Did you pay for that? Right. <laughs> exactly. Like, you have to tell the story before you show it. It's like, all right, so I kind of tattooed myself upside down. And this is what happened. <laughs> oh, okay, that's not, that looks like that you tattooed yourself upside well, down. What, what had happened was. Yeah, it started uh, just like that. What had happened was. But, so also with the uh, Shut Up Ink, though, I'm curious. So when you have the four hours and everything, it's, we're splitting it up, right? Yeah, there's there's two there's two groups of three. Yes. Okay, and each one gets four hours. All right. So if you're in the first group, right, and you're you've done your four hours, and then the next group is going, and you see somebody, are you gonna be like looking and, and if their tattoo is like, I know me, I, I would like be like, yo, sit like back Sam. down. Let me test something something up real quick. <laughs> Like looking at other artists too, or are you going straight into just tunnel vision zone? Or are you going to be comparing and like looking at what um, other artists got? It's one of those things that's cool about tattooing is like you can embrace your own style. You know, everybody's different. Yeah. Um, I'm still learning too. So as far as like comparing, like I try to stay humble and like keep right. it to just what I know and what I, you know, what I'm going to try to knock out. But if uh, I saw somebody else looking dope, I'd be like, somebody give me a tattoo gun. I'm about to hit this. <laughs> yeah. this shade if I had the, that, right? if I had right. the you chance to, to right? and I yeah, can get away with that problem. You know, just, just, yeah, that would be, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That would be just such the test right there. Like to be in the first group and you got another four hours. And the thing just, is too, like, like, I don't know if people are going to be like, while people are tattooing, if other people are going to be like all huddled around. No, 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 like, no. You know, to, know. to yeah. see in your booth, they'll have to tune in. To the thing, the furthest we're letting them go is the hallway, yeah. and that's just so and there's no yeah. fuckery, right? Yeah, because oh, it's real easy to get to that point. Oh Everybody yeah, wants to get in your business to see what's going on, right? No, nah. I, I get it. It's exciting, if but you, it's right. like if you want an inside look into the tattoos as they're being applied and as the contest is going on, you have to tune in to the Who That podcast, where we will have yeah. exclusive camera set up. Yeah. Other than that, just you're gonna enjoy the festivities. You can walk through the hallways, and and that's about it. Yeah. And like we have to let the the contestants have their space, have their freedom, because they are artists. Right. You cannot cramp their shit. Yeah. So it's everything's gonna be respected. You don't have. But I guess like more to answer your question, like if I were to see somebody's thing, what they were doing, yeah. and I had already done mine. Yeah. Would I want to go back if I could? Probably. Yeah. Just like <laughs> big perfectionist, you know, like. Oh, I could have done this, could have done that. Yeah, yeah that's the remember. part that, like, when we thought about, like, oh, that would just make me just antsy as shit. <laughs> to be done and be like, all right, I got four miles. How's it, how's it looking in there? They're doing good? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> like, oh, it's, it's dope? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's dope? real dope? Damn. Are we talking about like kind of dope? We talking about <laughs> cut with you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing black and gray. Talking. They're doing color. Yeah. How many colors? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. They're like two hours in. They already doing colors. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. exactly. James, you don't have any tattoos, do you? I do not. No. What? What? Uh, Join the club. No. Um. See, my problem is. Uh, He's like, nope. Paco <laughs> already tell you. I'm kind of a connoisseur and snob about pretty much everything I do. Uh. Honestly, I'm, is good. I, I don't. I've never had the money to dump on a tattoo. Yeah, that's honest. Third well, I, I really want, because like, I mean, if I'm doing it, I'm not just going to, I go big or go home. Right. You know As someone saying? that. I'm going to have something 
badass. Yeah. yeah. As someone that cost me probably four or five grand. Yeah. Yeah. Right, what, are you, what are you saying over here? As someone that started getting tattooed at the age of 17. <laughs> yeah, no. Nope. That's one of the things that I always tell people when they're getting ready, you know, to get a tattoo. Like, number one, you get what you pay for. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and yep. it's going to be there for forever, so make sure it means something. You right. know, I had a cousin that got uh, the Tasmanian devil smoking a joint. <laughs> right. uh, when he turned 18 I said well, that doesn't make any sense sometimes Why? those are my favorite okay but then it, it yeah. like you have to like to explain to people that if you want a lot of detail it has to be big you can't yeah. you, you can't like say I only want my tattoo to be this big and then I want it to have all of these different intricate things in it like that's difficult yeah. and if well, you're gonna get it you get what you pay for like you yeah. Don't ever get the hookup tattoo. Ever. Right, exactly. The biggest thing with the details and stuff, though, is just like you want to make sure that it's going to heal properly. Right. Like, just yeah. because it looks super and over dope time one, too. doesn't yeah. mean it's going to look that way. Depending right. on how it's applied, like ten years later, exactly. you know, you got to make sure yeah. like and, it's all done right. And that's kind of part of it, isn't that taking your time? I mean, I don't know because I'm not a tattoo artist, but it's kind of like it's taking your time. It's methods. It's like it's a trade. You know, yeah. it's just anything else. Like you know how to like. I meant like as a as as far as the canvas goes, like you want to, sp- if you're doing something complicated, for example, don't you want to space it out as the, you know, as the artist or the person getting it, like, mm-hmm. you don't want to rush the work. Like, right. No, your yeah. skin yeah. also, and, your skin can only take so much at a time, too. Yeah. Like, if your body's telling you to stop, then, like, you can't. Right. I hate yeah. those points. The tap out sessions. Yeah. I hate those points when your skin just goes... Like it just, You're raw and it like just, and it, the needle won't even fucking screaming at you like it's please just, stop doing this shit. Yeah. <laughs> the longest I've ever said has been five hours. Five hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the longest. Yeah. And I don't I think I'd ever do it again. I'll see, I've got, I don't know. I've got two tattoos for sure that I know I'm gonna do, but one of them is going to take several months and like be a thing. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the fun part, old, dedicating like, yourself to it. like warrior culture oh, yeah. and whatnot, <clears throat> you used to, uh, what you do is you would break down your uh, your family's house crest and everything. Yeah. Colors and all of that. And you would put pieces of it on like each shoulder mm. and each thigh. So if you died in battle, they'd be able to find the body. Mm. Because back then, when you died in battle, it's probably because you got an arm cut off or a leg cut off. They couldn't uh, find your body. What if your They'd tattoo was on your arm uh, and then your arm so got you cut off? One on your shoulder on each one. What I'd like to do, and they wouldn't right be able shoulder, to identify you. you. The whole crest and the whole thing. <laughs> okay. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take kind of the elbow up and have some kind of like old school Celtic armor, like detailed shit with the whole crest, and then I'd do the rest of it symbolically on the thighs and, and mm. the arm. Um, that's so hard. That's it looks idea. like Bob. Yeah, I love it. You Bob know, has right. no arm. And, yeah, I can't I tell. Cool. Like, there's no family like, crest. Yeah. It, it speaks there's family, no llama tattoo. You know, Bob had llama tattoo. <laughs> um, the other end of that is uh, my dog. I really want to get his. Uh, Which one? Uh, he got Schultz. Uh, Wait a minute. Oh, if you get Schultz, you gotta get dog. gotta get Molly too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Molly's my dog. Schultz is my dog. Oh, okay, I got you. I got anyway, you. When, when Schultz died, they took his uh, paw print and they mm. and uh, and they get like an ink blot of it. Yeah, I yeah. love that ink blot. Yeah. Okay. And, and then uh, around the edge of it, like in, in circular fashion, I want ancient Greek that says "All dogs go to heaven." Ah, nice. But I want that over my love life. that movie. I don't want to love so, oh, so hey, Kim. That's my homie, man. I'm emotional. Shout out to Schultz, best dog that has ever lived. Right. So, Kim, hey, um, how difficult was it picking what you were gonna do? Um, I kind of more talked to my canvas, kind of figured out like what they were looking for. Oh what... yeah, you do have to take that into account, don't you? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is fucking permanent. <laughs> I mean, they're signing up for it. But it's... Yeah. yeah. So that so it wasn't super hard as far as like coming up with like a style for it more, like wanted to see what they wanted first and then right. going there. So are you are you staying uh, in your comfort zone with it? Or are you like just kind of pushing? I mean, it's it? it's not something I've done before. Oh, but okay, it's okay. it's not so far out of my reach. I would say, you right. know what I mean. Got to find the happy medium. New. It's still yeah. like the challenge piece of it. It's just you know. Right. Don't want to go too crazy. Don't want to right. bite off more than you can chew. You know? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Four right. hours isn't a whole lot of time either, right? 
It is, but it's not. You can do a lot in four hours. I mean, and everybody's different. I'm not the fastest tattooer. It's just what it is. Like, I'm still learning, and I take my time. Yeah. And I'm kind of, I'm a little slower. If you talk to Bruno, he's a lot faster than I am, and gets right. he gets shit done quick. But he's got and he's got years tight. on you, though, you know. Oh yeah, he's he's been doing right. it for about 17, 18 years. Right. He's been tattooing. I've been doing it for like nine months. So. Right. So, yeah. A little, a little different. Okay. Yeah. He, might, he might be a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um. Are you bringing any uh, merchandise, any swag? So we will have t-shirts for Lucky Tattoo that we'll be giving out. And then as far as like artwork and stuff like that, Bruno will bring some things that he's done. I'll have some things too. Just oh, to cool. Kind of showcase whether we're selling it or just to kind of show and off. And the art is going to be on display. Art yeah. for sale. Yeah. Woo woo. Cool. <laughs> hey, yo, you can get another piece. I do need another piece. You see the one I got at the... Uh, I keep looking at it. Yeah, it's dope, but uh, I want more art in my home from artists. I like all the color. Artists. Yeah. I wish you can get Shout like, out to a Eric Watson. Yes. Okay. Mm. So, um... He's coming also. Is he coming? Yeah. Is he going to do a vendor booth? I don't know. I need to uh, see if he wants to set that up. I wonder how the weather, the weather you think, will affect the paint at all, or... It, it definitely, yeah. It's gonna oh, be fuck. It's going to be windy. Definitely. You, well, I don't. We will know if it's gonna be windy, but it'll be cold, a little cold, yeah. a little chilly. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, we see. Yeah, we can see. Yeah. So, cold cool. shouldn't affect paint too bad. No, no. I as hope long it's not windy. That's the right. Point. As long as it's not too windy. So, um, Kim, is there any uh, any surprises we're gonna see, or what? Do you, what do you got for us for uh, shut up in ink? Let me uh, let me hear it. Any surprises? Yeah. Me, oh, don't let don't make it give it away to other contestants. If it's a surprise, it's, a, it's that's a surprise. true. That's true. Uh, okay. As far as because I, I think what people are really wanting to see is just what people are, you know, what the pieces they're going to be doing. So right. Mm-hmm. I don't want to so, give too much away oh, yet. There's a there's a there's a group of folks that's not wanting this to go off with a hitch, you know, and it's crazy because we're trying to unify the the tattoo community here and it's like they don't want to be unified some of them you know some of them depend some on the drama the shops or, yeah, yeah yeah some of them depend on the drama as, to, as marketing for their shop as, instead of getting legitimate marketing you right. know it's a small town there's yeah. a lot of shops in a small town i've noticed that so. as i moved to this area uh, almost nine years ago and when I got here, there was one tattoo shop in Columbia. And now it seems, I'm, how many are there now? Seven. There are seven say, shops yeah, like now. Yeah. How many are going to compete in, uh, in we invited. We invited all of them. Yeah, who's competing? Um, it is Kim and Bruno. Okay. Joe. Yeah. It yeah, is sure. Ronnie. It is, uh, what's the girl from the Yeti? Mary Blake? Yes. Mary Blake. And uh, and Shauna from Mule Town. What is that place called? Mule Town. Colorful Life. Yeah, Colorful Life. Yes. Colorful. So that that is who competing. I uh, I expected another shop to compete, and they totally backed out. Yeah. Totally went the other direction after they said they were going to compete. That's mm. weird, man. Um, no, it's not weird. It's their style. <laughs> That's their style. Uh, of, yeah. But, I mean, it still seems strange to me that people are trying to, like, speak out against it or sabotage it in some kind of way. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why not? Like, even, even if, you, you, even you if you're not a part of the competition or you don't. Right. You think you're above it. You've That's seen... cool. You could say that. You don't have to be... Yeah. But you don't shit about it, you right? Know, exactly. Look, I mean, we don't need to be involved in this. Yeah, yeah. But so, you just still be like, that's that's cool though. Yeah, like, yeah. Regardless. I wouldn't even say it's cool. I mean, if I had a problem with it, I'm, but you know, that's one thing to yeah to get yourself involved. That's cool. If you don't want to, that's cool too. Right. Talk shit about it and like yeah. actually actively campaign against it is petty and stupid. Right. Like, Thank you I very mean, much. Yeah. yeah I mean, so I'll just be like, look, I'm above that. Like, my tattoo parlor or whatever is better than this shit. We're right. not going to be involved in this little dumbass thing they doing or whatever. If you wanted to be like that, and it's still kind of petty, but... Well, here's don't, the thing. Don't the competition. No, no, I'm not. And I don't mean Hold like on. Well, not you. I mean the person. The, like, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, don't. So, the, the competition itself is just... It's not even... Like, it is a competition... 
But it's it's a competition. It's fun. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And it's also Damn, good people. marketing. I mean, it's we great marketing. Right. You know, people down there get to fun. people to you see know, local artists. We bringing a bunch of motherfuckers to this tattoo together. We gonna you know, eat, more drink, business. and listen to some right. Yeah, it's cool to say is that like right, you know shit. when I first heard about sure. it, but this is before I was ever guested on this this podcast or anything like that. When I first heard about it, I thought it was cool as hell. Yes, like, that's a great idea. All right, it's you like know, it's, cool. it's, it's like the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not even really about it being competition. I was like, that's just awesome. It showcases art, yeah. people doing stuff. You know, like hell yeah. yeah. And, and you like, can sell. Popular. You don't right. have to win. Who gives a shit if you win? It's just cool. It's right. Nice to be a community, just like you said, and right. really, like bringing people that like enjoy art and mm-hmm. tattooing. I mean, it's an original type of art that. And there's a bunch every of other art form love, can you know? collab. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah why Even can't if you? Don't have tattoos yourself. A lot of people appreciate it and just like. I mean, my mom's ready like to get another fun. tattoo right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, anybody totally even just has yeah, yeah. one feels included. She, like, my she mom talked has about one it yesterday. tattoo, and she feels the same way. Like, you know what? I might come out there, and, you know, at the after party, I might get me a tattoo. Mm-hmm. It's good. Yeah. 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 Get you a tattoo. Even my milk toast little sister has a tattoo. I have no tattoos. <laughs> not me at all. You so, know, I love tattoos. Of so yeah. I'm a big fan. Like, I, don't think I've, I don't think I've ever dated a chick without tattoos. Right. I know I haven't. Right. So, um, we got the swag. She's bringing the swag. Who's yeah, going to be running y'all's booth? I mean, we'll both be there. I'm pretty sure stuff will be there. Bruno's okay. Wife all right. And, all right. Cool. So. Yeah, she's cool. I, uh, yeah, I met her a couple times. She's, she's um, starting apprenticing, actually. Oh, wow. So. She finally took the plunge. Yeah. Huh? yeah so yeah. she's got her booth set up. We got a power team right now. That's cool. That's cool. Us, so I'm excited how, to bring it out. How many apprentices do you think there are in the city? Uh, honestly, a I'm lot. not. I'm not for certain because every time I hear about somebody else, I feel like yeah. they're local. I don't know a lot of these people personally, so I've had just like hear about two, it the great two apprentices come up and they're like, "You need to do it again, but do it for the apprentices because I'm, it's I'm more got, of us." I'm definitely yeah. using apprentice right now. Yeah, and like they were like, "It's a yeah. lot of us." So are you talking about like, like another competition? Yeah, like they like no, yeah. For There's just a lot the of them. There would like, definitely be enough to do it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've had two stop me and they were like, "Yo, like we didn't get into it because we weren't like we're not official tattoo artists, are you?" Yeah, right. They were like, "Yo, if you do an apprentice one." I'm not exactly and sure if that's legal. Is that legal? Can apprentice? Yeah, they can. They can, they they can get down. Yeah, but. As, as long yeah. as you have somebody who's, uh, I, I don't know the official term on this one, but somebody who's a journeyman or somebody who is if, already. If an you are artist, under a licensed that? artist, then yeah. you you can tat, and the place is certified, yeah. like yeah. by the health department. Then you can tattoo there with. Yeah. Hold on, so, and them everybody, there. stop right there! Stop but, right there! Stop right there! Yeah. I'm not. I'm not meaning to cut you off. So, we heard a lot from people about, you know, we're we're hosting it at Revolution and all this stuff. And part of the reason we did is because they had the most outdoor space and we had to have a place that was licensed for them i mean that yeah. was by the health department because that's a that's a given right if like you don't have that you can't do yeah, it exactly. right so like everybody that's boohoo crying about this shit like you know this is what we had to do to make this happen in this amount of time and we have to generate funds to be able to do it next year right and yeah, you that's start somewhere right you gotta and start somewhere like hats off to the artists like Kim and Bruno and Ronnie and Shauna who are willing to step into that arena there. But you know, that's Joe's shop. But at the same time, when who that touches down in that bitch, that's our show for that night. You know, Joe is a friend of ours. He's letting us do this there. That's what it is. You know, that's the arena. That's the terror dome. Yeah, I know. That's the terror dome. I mean, it's kind of a situation, right? I mean, like if somebody else, had the uh, the licensure or whatever through the health department and wanted to give you the space and had the space, then they could have right. the shit. Boom. Right. I mean, it's right? possible. They didn't so, want to do it. So. I mean, look, that doesn't mean start doing your own fucking tattoo competition. <laughs> <laughs> Who that got this market locked the fuck down, baby? Right. All right. Can y'all let us know for right. just like just my people the health that are just now watching the podcast? Can you tell idea. us where the competition is and what uh, they did? It's at Revolution Inc. November 9th. It's across November. from the Big Wash Tub. On Hatcher yeah. Lane. On Hatcher Lane. So, um, but yeah, we gonna have food. That's the most important. And it, thing. Well, food we, trucks. Yeah, food, food trucks. trucks. We'll have food trucks, fire dancers, 
Damian Boggs is performing. Uh, Short and Low is performing. Um, yes. Poe uh, po Boy and Poets. Yeah, Poe Boy and po Poets are performing. And Derek Weaver will be per, uh, doing a glass blowing display also. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And then at the after party is a tattoo party and we got a dancer. Yes, we have an after and, party. Uh, and we got Supreme Vegans going to have vegan food and we got the open bar with music and all that. Right. Oh, oh, that sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's a sky bar. Yeah. 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 I feel like Columbia is really expanding with the art community in general, like the Columbia Arts Building, and just right. yeah, yeah. they're going to be building the factory. You guys know about that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yep. that one, frankly. Um, yeah. This is this um, is next that, up. I mean, we have our own arts council now too, which is cool. Yeah. Shout out to Ross James, my homie. All right. So, yeah. what were you saying, Brandon? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, Columbia's about to like blow the fuck up. And, yeah. And we're going to be at the forefront of all of that shit. Yeah, because after this we're doing a shut up and paint. We're yeah, we're doing shut up and game. Paint. Yo, just telling people about the shut up and game. Uh huh. Oh my god, the we're pot is gonna be huge, game. dude. Gaming competition. Shit. Yeah. The, the pot is oh, gonna be yeah. huge, man. I already had a dude say he was like, "Bro, if you got that two K, I got five hundred. Yeah. I'm the baddest in the city." Oh I was wow. Like, Damn. Well, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it depends, man. There's several games that I play. Yo, yeah. I want to call it duty. That's what I was thinking. Uh, I'm gonna give a shit about but that. dude said, like Smash Brothers, dude said the two K. I was like, right, we caliber. might have to do that. Bro. All them fighting games, man. Yeah, fighting. Yeah, that's that's Smash Brothers, man. I'll put some money on Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. yeah, dude. Yeah. Shoot. I'll nah, get dude. Star Fox and laser your ass from I'll the take your rent money like it ain't shit. <laughs> oh, see, oh, shut up and game is coming soon. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking shit. Yeah. I'm talking shit. Yeah. Shut up and game is yeah. coming soon. Yeah. yeah. We, oh, man. No. That might have to come next. Shut up and paint might have to wait. Uh, we should have been paying to be easy to put together now. Uh, I want to beat him. I mean, that's cool. I bet you do, baby boy. Yeah. I bet you do. <laughs> so, um, Kim, anything you want to let the other contestants know? Um, talk everybody shit. just come out, talk all kinds of shit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're, all, we're all about it. Just, you know, get in the spirit and support your local tattoo community and come have fun. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah. It's going to be dope as fuck. Yeah, I'm super excited. Like, are you coming to the after party too? Uh, the after party. Yes. Oh, uh, the one here. Yes. Um, so no. we're thinking about. We were talking about before you guys decided to do that, doing one at the shop. So. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean that's cool. So that's I don't. Cool. So I'm not sure, you know. But yeah, I ain't know, fucked up with it. I show up at your party too. Yeah. Shit. It'll be an all day party. That's what I'm saying. Like y'all can come down yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be dope. It's Absolutely. gonna be live. The whole town is gonna be. I'm I'm trying to like beat out meal day. <laughs> I'm trying to beat out the old man. In one <laughs> parking lot. Right. In one parking lot. Right. In one parking lot. X name the mules, please. Man, I'm trying to beat out Mule Day in one parking lot on the first attempt. Not even, <laughs> not even the third year. Like on the you first. Breaking record. records Those today. I'm just things, trying to like do the little tiny little pet pony things. What that's, a whole, that's the only reason I go. See them cute ass little horses running around. That's what we yeah. need. We need a. Petting I'm not zoo. putting the horses, y'all know. We need a petting zoo. No. Next year there'll be a petting zoo for the kids at the tattoo competition. Don't get some shit. Doing full it. size mules. We're all over here watching one person get pulled around by like ten little baby horses. Oh uh, yeah. Little clip 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 clip. Yep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, everybody will be there for the uh for the little ponies. We're giving yeah, away the, yeah, the, the trophy. Kim is one for the second year. Oh, we oh. should show Kim uh, the trophy. Yeah, right. Hold on. Oh man. But you oh, can't show the you, you can't, can't show, show the, the camera. People. You can't show the camera. Yeah, you, the, the camera can't see it. You have to like keep it over here. You have to make sure they they don't. It's they a secret it. trophy. Yes. yes, they can't see what the trophy looks like. They can't see what it looks like. Okay. All right. Yeah. Pass that to Kim. I wanna see it. No, just hand it to her. Hand I'm it trying to. Her. <laughs> well, it's dope. Yeah. Really? Isn't that isn't that crazy? That's fresh. Yeah. Are you serious? Yes, it's our, it's hey. our. Yeah, that shit is Good hard. Good job, guys. Out. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I might become a tattoo artist, so I can have that. Yeah. Just kidding, I'm not artistic at all. There's nothing artistic about me. Man. Nothing. <laughs> so, um. Makeup. Hmm? Makeup's artsy. That's, that's where it ends. That's where it ends. I can't even decorate. Like decorate I don't like what? decorating either. Like like my house. Yeah. Oh yeah. You I see can't. my place. I got shitty furniture over here. I got 
booths in the back. I, I got all kind of shit is. everywhere. And the only reason <laughs> I can do this is like multiple YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Just you can just watch YouTube t- tutorials all day long on mm. makeup. Yeah, that's true. Mm. So you know the method, not the art. Yes. There it is. Oh, something else too. I was talking to Bruno recently, and I think we're gonna start doing art classes similar to like a like the twisted paint type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Bring in yeah. your own drinks and uh, like no kids, you know, right. it's only. No and uh, I th- so it's in the making, mm-hmm. but they're probably gonna be run on Mondays or Sundays. Okay. And uh, so to be tuned on on that but cool. yeah. if you guys want to come in and like do yeah. some tattoo flash or whatever and like bring drinks and like I'll I be up there like I would love to learn how to paint some Sailor Jerry tattoos yeah like that's that's what we're gonna do that's, yeah, that's the goal that's dope. do some fun <laughs> shit and like bring some drinks and have a good time yeah I'm fucking with it I'm with it yeah I'm serious it, it'll be a blast I've seen became an artist like became like an official like painter yeah and I've always like loved how tattoo goes in the painting so to learn how to paint in a tattoo shop mm-hmm. would be dope as hell that's a lot of uh, damn you're fun. a lot of feng shui so that's definitely yeah, happening yeah. like just as far as time we'll, we'll figure that out but I'll let you guys know yeah soon. for sure yeah. you should probably talk to Quan. yeah yeah and um See if he'll help kind of put the word out for some shit like that, too. Yeah. For you guys. Yeah. You know? Does Lucky have a Facebook page? Yes. They're tagged. They're tagged on the... Back. Yeah. <clears throat> Go to the Lucky uh, Tattoos Facebook page. Uh, hit the, the, the little tag. And so you can keep updates if you are interested in the classes. So you can learn how to paint some dope tattoos. I can't wait to learn how to paint some Sailor <laughs> like, Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. I want to so learn how sad. to paint the girl with the hula skirt so bad. <laughs> yeah. That's so hard. Yeah. Hell yes. All right. So um, we got the shut up and ink. We got the shut up and ink after party. We have the uh, we're picking doing a litter pickup in the and I'm doing the homeless uh, clothes drive. Are you this month? Yeah. Okay. This I think is our fifth year doing yeah. this. Um, I'm gonna be announcing that. Uh, so anybody that's already my Facebook friend, you already know I do this every year. So <laughs> right. Gonna, right. So. It's, just get your clothes and stuff ready for me. Uh, right. We're going to be doing a litter pickup with the T Talks girls. And I feel like I'm missing something. Do we have anything else? Uh, the tour. Oh, we're on tour. Yeah. Yeah, we're on a tour of other people's podcasts. Right. Too. It's a tour of other people's podcasts. I'm too. trying to find the date here. Hold on. Because I typed in who that and all I got is every conversation ever. But you know what? I'm looking in the wrong place anyway. Yep. I need to be here. So you're looking at the date on the what what? For us to go on Those Guys podcast. Yes. Oh, we're trying to get the dates for the podcast tour. I think tour his I think his was on the sixteenth. And we had to reschedule Cripple and Baldy. Yes, because yeah. I've been working like a madman. They got back to work finally from the strike. Shout out to yeah. all the UAW workers. Yo, we but, are uh, back and we haven't had an off day yet. We are just going. We're working twelve hour shifts. And by the, the by the time we have an off day, we would have worked twelve days straight. I think something like that. Right. So we're just. I'm. I'm I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> He's so exhausted from working. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. So on the sixteenth of this month, we'll be on Those Guys podcast. On the sixteenth of November, yes. we will be coming to the Those Guys. Yeah, Those Guys, and that's Matthew Stevens' podcast. I think his co-host is his brother. I'm not sure. I'm pretty yeah. sure, you know, but... We'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Matthew's been really close with who? James in the background? <laughs> Yo, yeah. I was yeah. <laughs> turn the light off back there, motherfucker. No, that's okay. I no, should... no, turn the light off. I'm not oh, asking. Shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> turn the light. No, it's okay. Motherfucker, no. Turn the light off. <laughs> Both lights. Oh, uh, okay. They're right by... There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, nigga, it's not. <laughs> it's not okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hey, we can do it. Right. That liquid courage you putting in there. <laughs> I already know what Paco could do with a bag of popcorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, we're going to change gears here in a second. But, Kim, is there anything you'd like to say before we change over to our second topic for today? Um... Not at the moment. I'm just excited. Yo, I'm excited. Wait, wait. Have you picked out what you're going to wear? No. Okay. That's 
it's always like a night before ordeal. You go but, through like ten outfits, and then you're like, okay. And so, it's also probably gonna be cold as shit. You said right. So, well, y'all will be inside. Like, y'all gonna be inside, so y'all be fine. I still have to. Yeah. There's a door in the back there and everything. It's still Listen, probably I, ne- I never told like Kim this, y'all. So when I went to get my tattoo from Kim, I think you were in like some ripped up shorts. And then maybe like some fishnets. And I was I like, No way. Yes, you were. I was, I was not wearing fishnets. Oh, well, what were they? It had to be something. I don't think it was. Shit. I was it fishnet? No, was it bare leg then? Probably. I don't know. It was like, y'all don't know. If y'all don't know, Kim, how fishnet. tall are you? 5'10. 5'10. And it's probably about five foot of legs, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I was like, wow, I'm getting a tattoo with all this leg. <laughs> Kim, she models, very beautiful person. So he very imagined, beautiful. He, he imagined the fishnets. No, did I did oh, like, I imagine I the fishnets? Never wear fishnets. You're probably so, like, thinking I would cool. love to he see was her. Getting, he was getting, <laughs> <laughs> That's he was getting what a was. tattoo. He was like, this would be so much better if she had on fishnets. Fishnets. <laughs> Close his eyes and say, mm. There's the fishnets. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that happened. Shit. So but yeah, I was just curious if you had the outfit picked out if not yeah. yet, and if I did, it probably would change anyway. Oh, always for, for sure, goes, you know? for sure. But so, okay. Um, well, guys, we're gonna gonna thank Kim from uh, Lucky Tattoo. It is Lucky Tattoo. Thank That's you. the official name, right? Yes. I'm not butchering anything. Okay, yeah. Lucky Tattoo. Yep. Yep. Okay. From I always want to say like Lucky Seven Tattoo, and I'm like, no, it's just Lucky Tattoo. It's, yeah, that, that's yeah, understandable though. Yeah, so um, I want to thank Kim for coming on and um, you, talking to us a little bit about you know the process and y'all root for Kim. She she's Team Lucky Seven out there. Team, you just said Lucky oh, Seven. Oh, Team Lucky Tattoo. Wow, why do I do that? Why do I do? I always do that. It's I'm a casino baby yeah. though. My parents yeah. used to go to the casino. Yeah, yo, Lucky Seven shit. We used to be all over Paco's house. Yes. Yo. Yeah, like. How are we doing that too then? Yeah, it's awful. I'm it's so sorry. Lucky That's all right. Seven. That'd be seven. <laughs> but yeah, I want to thank her for coming on and you know expressing a little bit about competition from her angle. Is there any uh, Instagram or anything you want people to find you? Yes. So my Instagram is Kim dot does dot tats. Uh, Bruno's Instagram and the shop Instagram is um, Lucky underscore Tat and the number two. It's like Tat two. But okay. Uh, ah, I get that. Gotcha. So we'll we'll put that in the comments or. Yeah, uh, go ahead, go ahead with your bass. I'll up. put that in there right now. <laughs> So, so we're going to change gears just a little bit, a little bit more serious note. And we we have been promising everyone we're going to talk about addiction and we were going to talk about uh, you know, kind of drug counseling and where we were going to go with it to present it to the community. So possible solutions to a growing crisis. Right. And like me and Brandon said before, we had lost Really, we're losing people every Saturday night and waking up Sunday and waking up Sunday with it. And it's... And you know the crazy thing that I realized? You know how we uh, last week we were like, that was the first week we had without somebody passing away? Right. That's only, like, that's a good thing. But if you look, I was just thinking about it. The weekend before, two people passed away. Oh so yeah. It's still, you know what I mean? How, oh like, yeah, it's, that, like, it's still week. on count. It's yeah, just yeah, it's still on count. We just got two one weekend, and then we had one weekend off, and right. then so just, then last night somebody passed. So I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's been it's been crazy. It's really, it's and I, part of the problem, I mean, is the drug itself. But yeah. part of the problem is the people, they're not used. To this heroin, the way they do drugs here is they usually buy as much as they can, do as much as they can, and push it to the limits. And heroin is not a drug you can do that with. Well, it's not heroin anymore, for okay. the most part. What do you mean? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't. I want to be able to look at y'all when I talk to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, for the most part, uh, what you're finding. Scoot this way, just a little what bit. Way? This way. Yeah, you're good. All right, there you okay. go. Just so, what what we're finding today, and it has been for the past couple of years, is. Uh, there's a drug that they use called fentanyl, right? Right. So it used to be, say, five years ago, four years ago, uh, they would use fentanyl to just cut the heroin to make it go farther. Okay, they just add it in. Right. What we're finding now is there's less and less actual heroin in it and more fentanyl. 
Mm. Right. And it's, you take it, to simplify it, and this is how you find a group of people, say, I, I go, I'm in Columbia, and I'll go up to Nashville, right? right? And I'll get dope, and I'll bring it back for everybody, right? Because right. not everybody needs to drive to meet the dope man. Right. right. And how you have a group of people who all have the same stuff, say four people, mm-hmm. and three people are okay, and one, pe- one person dies. Right. Um, if you can imagine like a chocolate chip cookie, right? Uh, sometimes you can take a bite of the cookie, but you don't get a chocolate chip. Right. right. Other people take a bite of the cookie, they that's, get all chocolate chips. That's a good analogy yeah. for that. Yeah, metaphor, I don't know. Metaphor. But keep going, yes. sorry. So what we're finding is that there's less and less heroin and more and more fentanyl in it. And when you have uh, a tolerance, you don't know what kind of dope that you're getting. Uh, but the way that it works is... You're sick and it hurts and you're in pain, you know, so you're going to take that chance, mm-hmm. you know, whether or not, you know, it's, it's a new dope man, it's a new stash, it's a new whatever, um, and you use and, and that's the end. Right. And yeah. that's the end, you know, and it's, it's devastating. It's devastating to our community. It's, it's devastating and it's, and it's all over the country. It's right. all over the country. And so, um, have you seen the, uh. And your and your work when people like contact you to try to seek therapy. So you're the 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 person that somebody goes to when they're down to like their last, like when they know they need help or they they're about to like break, huh? To, or they're court ordered. Yeah, but like it depends. I mean, you can be court ordered and not get any help. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's I've true. had I've had multiple patients uh, who would just rather go to jail uh, and do their time than mm. go to treatment. Wow. I mean, it, I mean, that's, wow. you know, I'd rather go to jail for six weeks and be done uh, than have to go to treatment. Mm. I mean, I, I've seen that multiple times. It's definitely, treatment's definitely not a get out of jail card. Mm. Right. 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 So with, with you being the one that people contact, like, have you seen a rise or have you seen a uh, influx spike or, yeah, influx in in the type of drugs that they're addicted to or the how bad it is or well, just been, the numbers. I've know. been helping people get into treatment for six years now. Um, and I, it's not that I've seen a rise in people seeking help. Right. Uh, because people are always going to seek help. But you've seen a change. You've seen a change when it comes to uh, more more overdoses, more overdoses, more overdoses right. than than before. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Because of yeah. of the fentanyl, and yeah. people are actually you know being we're able to get people back and give them a chance to get help when uh, Narcan is ready and available. Right. And if you don't know what Narcan is, uh, it's this you can get it anywhere. You can get it at Walgreens uh, from the pharmacy department. If you have friends or loved ones. Uh, that you know are struggling uh, with this issue, uh, keep it on hand, keep it in your car, keep it in your purse, uh, just squirt it up their nose, and it brings them back and gives you an opportunity to get your loved one help again. Hmm. Now, now Narcan, that's that's where they're they're funding a lot of it for free now, aren't they? They're handing it out to law enforcement for free and stuff. I wouldn't necessarily say it's free. Right. Uh, it's It's not free. Uh, but what they're doing is they're cutting out, you know, budgets and communities to make sure that all first responders uh, have Narcan available. Right. Uh, what, what is what is Narcan? So Narcan is a drug that reverses the effects of opioids. Um, it's like opioid, like when people think you stab with adrenaline, you know, they stab yeah. people with adrenaline. <laughs> yeah, that's it's kind of like that, but that's but I'm not that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, when people just get addicted to Narcan. No, 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 no it doesn't no work addi- like there's that. There's no addictive okay. properties yeah. to Narcan. It just brings you back. It just yeah. brings you back okay. and puts you into immediate withdrawal. It's like opioid smelling salt. Wow. Yeah, yeah uh, that is a very good way to put that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So, <laughs> so where does fentanyl come from, then? Like. So we- it's a pharmaceutical. It's it's made in pharmacies. It's a uh, pain killer. Yeah, it? it's it's it it's okay. a it's a very high. So it's not very, from like very, Afghanistan opioid field. Or no, it's not. Oh, okay. It's okay. not. It's probably a lot of what you're seeing right now is uh, this drug that's being you know mass produced in China mm. for the most part. 
And people, you use fentanyl. So there is a place for fentanyl. Uh, but getting high. It, it, getting high is not it. So fentanyl is used post-surgery. Mm. Uh, fentanyl is used a lot of times in outpatient procedures uh, where technically you're awake, but they're still doing a procedure on you. You just don't feel anything. Mm. Um, it sounds like a C-section. Kind of. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it does, have, it does have it has you know it's it's an opioid but it's a very very synth, it's a synthetic opioid and it's very 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 powerful mm-hmm. um, you'll see people that have had in long term pain management where they've had multiple back surgeries or people that are dying of cancer or they get fentanyl patches mm. um, sticks and it'll stick to the skin right um so that's what they're getting it from. They just like no, you scrape this, it off the patches. No, 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 no. No, what they're getting what right now, what they're cutting heroin with is is fentanyl that's coming from majority from China, coming up from Mexico. It's been mass produced, and that's what people are using. But some people you can't even get dope anymore, and they're just using fentanyl. Wow. Yeah, like so. Go ahead. No, I think who's putting the fentanyl on the weed? Do you think? I don't know why you would ruin weed with fentanyl. Right. Um, that's not something that, but it also gets you high, so it gives you that opioid maybe effect. Maybe I don't know the right people then, because I've never met a person. I've I that's have, been like, man, I need to get some fentanyl with my weed. I, never, I oh, but it's been a very right long people. time for me. <laughs> but yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, but it gets you addicted. Yeah. And it gets you addicted and it gets you going back to get to get more. Uh, weed. But anyway. <laughs> I mean, they'll use fentanyl to cut anything. Right. You know, they will they will cut crack with fentanyl. So right. how cheap is fentanyl? I couldn't give you the numbers. It's a lot a cheaper lot. than heroin. I and it's it's flooded it's flooded be. the market though. Yeah. You have to think about it. It's flooded the market. It's everywhere. Oops. No, you're fine. So let's 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 change direction a little bit here, real quick. Um Oops. No, you're fine. So, with, you know, this fentanyl and everything, we talked about that. Let's talk about getting help. Okay. Okay. Let's say I'm trying to get Brandon help. Okay. And Brandon doesn't want me to try and get him help. Fuck you, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> I want my weed with my fentanyl. I don't know. You want, you want man. Your weed with I guess. I don't you know. Smell, dude. <laughs> so she's fucking leave me alone, dude. Right. So where do we need to go <laughs> to get Brandon help at this point? Um fucking my life. Man. I always hear, you know, you can't help people that don't want help and then they're dead. So So I there are there are different people have different views of this. Like every everybody's gotta hit rock bottom. Um, I don't necessarily believe that. Oh, and yeah. here's why. Because sometimes I think you need to raise the bottom so somebody can hit it. Because <laughs> wait, wait. Say that again. You need to raise the bottom so someone can hit it. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm a, I'm a little kid. I am. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> well, that's it, a t-shirt, for, my nigga. For a lot of people, though, for a lot of people, <laughs> rock bottom is death. Right. And right. there's no coming back from that. Right. You know? So there are many ways to intervene on a loved one. Um, oh. There are there are interventionists, right? Yeah. So you you know if you've got money, your family can hire an interventionist. Um, I always say confront with love. You know you got to sit down with somebody and confront them with love, and you got to tell them like this is how much I love you, and this is how I'm watching you die. Right. This is this is everything that you're losing, but you should never intervene on someone unless you have treatment ready for them to go to. Right. You know, mm. you can sit down and you have a you can have a conversation Wait. all day long with someone. Yeah, say that again because I I know a lot of people that that just intervene. Right. So and, and what does that do? How's that? A bad it, idea? Well, an intervention without treatment is just you getting together and with your with your friend and saying I'm telling you that you're fucked up and I'm telling you that you got to get help. But unless you offer help, it's just a voice. It's just a question without an answer at that point. You know? Yeah. I don't feel you. And, and, you know, well, and if a, you're and a person sick. person feel bullied at that point. Yeah, they, you know, if you're sick and, and you need help and suddenly everybody is confronting you with how much you've ruined their lives, how much you've ruined your own lives, your own life, and, you know, you you already hate yourself. I mean, nobody says, I'm a, I'm, 
I'm going to be a drug addict. No one right. ever says I'm going to be a junkie. Right. No one ever says like, this is, this is the view that I have for my life. Yeah. And that's all I want to be. Right. I can't wait to graduate high school to be a crackhead. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So nobody happen. ever says that. Right. So if you're going to go to your loved one, you always want to make sure that you, when they accept help, you have help ready to go. Right. Mm -hmm. Make sure that gun's loaded before well, you pull the trigger. Yeah, yeah, the intervention goes well, and, and you say, yes, I'll go to treatment. Right. Well, then you're like, oh, shit, now i got to find treatment. Yeah. Uh, That's just more days for them to fall off the wagon and... And, and to change your mind and figure out how you're going to do it different next time. Damn. Yeah. Then they're wary of you, too, also. They're like, mm. Very true. Yeah. Very so. true. So... I feel you on that. When that's something I, I, I honestly don't think people consider enough when dealing with loved ones or people that they care about. They don't... They want to just get it out. Like, hey, yo, I know what you're doing. You need to stop. You need to pull your life together. You need to fix this. You're going to go down the wrong path. And you didn't think I ever back. thought about that before? And, and then, like, but you don't have, like, any treatment, actual treatment facilities or resources for them. Mm -hmm. And that can actually backfire and make it much worse. Mm -hmm. You might not see that person again for six months. Yeah. All right. Huh. Man. Okay. I was uh, talking with a woman, who's and, and that's why when you said that, I'm like, it, it triggered because she was telling me how her son, she hasn't seen him in a long time. And so is that what you said, you might not see that person for six months. If you don't have the treatment ready, you just on some, you need to fix your shit. You're fucking up shit. She hasn't seen him for like, uh, I think she told me a year and a half, a year and four months mm -hmm. or something like that. And then last time, you know, they, they saw each other was a pseudo intervention, like improv type thing. And, it just went left. Like, and I tell families, so when families call me, you know, I tell them, they say, we're thinking about doing an intervention. And I say, okay, pump the brakes. You know, pump the brakes. Let's talk about what's going on. Mm. You know, you tell me what got you to this point. Mm. You know, what got you to the point where you're saying, uh, Joe needs help. I mean, did he get pulled over? Was mm. there an accident? Did he lose his job? Like, so there's always a catalyst. Yes. There's okay. always going to be a catalyst. Tell me what that catalyst is. Let's talk about it. And we need to have a bed ready for Joe. So when Joe says, yes, I will go to, I will get treatment. You know, then you're in the car, you're on the plane. Joe's there within 24 hours. Right. Mm. You know, you, mm. we, you have to do that. And there is going to be an intervention. There is going to be an intervention. So whether that's a family intervening or a loved one intervening, if that's the court intervening, okay, right. or that's death. Right. There yeah. will be an intervention no matter what. Wow. We have a question right here. What does that say? Can you read that? Is there anything for people that are constantly getting arrested, possession for it? Like all the young ones I see on mobile patrol all the time. Like, is there some kind of thing, something that can be enforced? Like three strikes and you're out. How they do with felons. I don't. So personally, I don't think that jail is that it doesn't help addiction. I mean, if you think about it like that, if you have people that go in to jail for six months uh, for possession and their drug is completely out of their system, they haven't used in six months. Uh, and the next thing you know, they're high. What? Um, I believe that if and this is me personally, I don't represent anybody or any company right now. I think if you commit a crime you know, while you're high or while you're getting high or whatever, then yes, right. jail. But for possession, I mean, that should just be a cry for help. So when you, when you read that question, I have, I, I, I kind of want to weigh in a little bit here. I was about to ask Cause he is a lawyer. Uh, when you, when you read that question was, so, I, I didn't understand if the person asking the question was asking, is there a program for that, the, or yeah, she's that. asking if there's a, some sort of like program or procedure. Like, so there's drug court. Well, it depends on your jurisdiction. I under, my understanding is the 22nd judicial jurisdiction or judicial district. Uh, that would be Murray, Wayne, Giles, and Lawrence is uh, kind of opening one right now. Okay. Uh, I don't know the extent of it yet, um, but I know that it's kind of getting started. Williamson County has their own drug court program. Uh, that would be the 21st district uh, i don't know all of their so when you stuff. when you say drug court program i mean what is that entitled to like what does that mean oh wait <laughs> tiffany says not jail as far as them getting help to stay out of jail okay thanks tiffany i'm okay. sorry uh, i didn't yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 
and I'll let you continue because I don't know if you know about DC4. Um, in Davidson County specifically, there's a program called DC4 that's excellent. I mean, uh, they've had their own hiccups with uh, Judge Moreland and whatnot, and uh, he was kind of rapey. And get back to the anyway, program. But, yeah. but, no, but, <laughs> but the way it is is like they they will take people who who are addicts and whatnot and, and offer them a route. Um, it doesn't involve jail time necessarily. If you get accepted in like something like DC4, uh, DC4 is a two-year program, that a year of which you'll be technically incarcerated, but they have beds. It's kind of like rehab, essentially, mm-hmm. for the first year. Um, you're going to have group and, and, and therapies of different types every day, all day, which you do for about a year. And they help you find a job. There are halfway houses for the second year. Um, the 21st district, uh, Williamson County, they have something similar that's that's not as well established as DC4. And I think I think drug court is is amazing, Tiffany, because this this is probably the answer you look for, and that's a lot of what James is talking about. So you. In order for someone to get help, there's going to have to be a consequence, right? So whether that is, like I was talking about, that legal consequence, that legal intervention, um, when we have systems in place um, that will help people get into treatment programs, to get into sober living facilities and consistently be monitored. And, you know, you might not feel like working a program of sobriety, but we're going to help you work a program of sobriety and to help you change your life. I yeah, and my and again, because I know that you probably are involved a lot in helping people get into these programs, depending, right? No. No? Okay. Nope. Um, I know a lot of people and care about a lot of people who have been, who have benefited greatly from drug court programs, though. Yes, and, and, and that's what I was going to say, is that I help clients do that, depending on the jurisdiction. Uh, like I said, right now in the 22nd, which is, again, Murray, Giles, Lawrence, and Wayne Counties, they're kind of I guess testing a program to do that like a drug court program mm. um, but in Nashville that one's been established and it's great well, uh, I can I can vouch for Nashville's all day long so in your more metropolitan areas drug courts are great so um, you have random testing so you call in and you know if you have a color code right so my color's blue I call in on Wednesday uh, everybody that has is, is color coded blue has to go to a local testing site you know and test uh, you go in from the judge, you know, show like I've been going to meetings, I've been doing what I'm supposed to do, and it's, it's consistent and it's rigorous. The downside to counties that are not metropolitan that don't have public transportation that is the difficult part. So, mm-hmm. for instance, Williamson County, right? Okay, part of, part of being in drug court is that you have to have a job, right? You have to have a job, you have to be looking for work. So my name is Sarah, mm. and I'm trying to get my life back together. I'm a drug addict, and I get hired at, you know, the MAPCO. I get hired at the MAPCO on, on Cool Springs Boulevard. And I'm going to work every day, and I'll, there's, there's not a bus line, right? So I got to find a way to make it to work every day. Uh, and then it's Wednesday, and I call, and I got a test. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm already at my entry level job that right. I'm lucky enough to get a job right. because making I already, Joe had, du- <laughs> making yeah, Joe I already have right. a kid. I already have a criminal record. Right. All right, and I go to my boss and I say, "Hey, um, I have to go, and I have to drop. I need to leave work right now. I've got set amount of time to get there, mm-hmm. uh, and I'll be right back. Can you cover my shift? Right, mm-hmm. and then I have to find a ride." Mm. I have to find somebody that's going to be willing to take me to the drop-off spot. And it's not that easy when you don't have a bus line. Right. Yeah, sure. it's, sure. it's not that easy. And people are very fortunate when they can find, you know, employers that are willing to work around a, a drug court schedule. A support system altogether. Really. Uh, yeah, a support yeah. system. You know, even if you're a DUI offender, right? Yeah. You don't have a driver's license. Yeah. 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 So if you're a DUI offender and and you're going through drug court, which is very, very, very common with DUIs, Mm -hmm. and you're in, you know, Murray County, Williamson County, uh, where there is no public transportation, 
you know, I have to find my my significant other, my brother, my sister, somebody that's well, going to take there, me to work. Uh, so, just to chime in really quick, there is actually public transportation in both Williamson and Murray counties. Uh, Murray County has a public transportation system, uh, Mule Town Trolley or whatever the hell it's called, but it exists. Uh, it's not exactly convenient, but do it does exist. No, they, well, and when oh, I'm, yeah, no, for Mount Pleasant, I mean, they, yeah, they, um, they do exist. It's just. It's not a bus line where you're going to get a bus every 15 minutes. Exactly. Right, it's right. Not, it's not like a It, it takes a lot of planning. It does, but, it, but that is still there. Right. Um, not only that, but my experience at least with clients and defense, you know, as a defense attorney, because I have to cover their ass when things like this happen. Yeah, you do. Um, a, a lot of the time, most probation officers are pretty understanding of, of your transportation issues and everything else that's going on as long as you're not bullshitting true you know I, I mean the hard part is say you've been on probation you already popped positive on a drug test they already gave you some leniency now you're bullshitting about being able to get there and, and you've been putting them off for a week or two they huh. lose patience at that point right sure and and that's where the issue comes in is maybe someone is actually trying you know like maybe they were bullshitting at first but now they really are trying to make an effort. That's an issue. Right. Know? And, and just because the probation officer doesn't trust you anymore doesn't mean that you aren't trying. Right. So, okay, as we're throwing problems out here, what is the solution to this problem, Rebecca? I mean, I think that it's, it's a complicated situation and there's not just one solution. You know, it is very hard to get people help. Right. It's it's hard to find help that's available. You know, it's, do you have insurance? Do you have private insurance? Can you afford the deductible? Mm. You know, do you have do you have Medicaid? You right. know, let's find you a Medicaid facility that's wait list isn't seven weeks long. Right. The the point is that from what I believe is to not stop trying. Yeah. You know, to continue to try to get better, to can you you know, continue to have people around you that care enough to support you. You know, and don't stop trying to help somebody. Not to the point where you're enabling somebody's addiction. Right. Right? Cuz I'm not about that. Right. I try and tell a lot of my my friends, they'll be like, and I think I've even said this to to Brandon before. I was you know, we were talking about somebody who was strung out or something like that. And he's like, man, I'm, I really wanted to, to help and get involved and stuff. And I was like, well, hold on. Me nor you are trained to handle a situation like that we all think we are. We're all like, oh, we need to jump in and help this person and da 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 And I'm like, there's people trained for this. And really all we have to do is connect the dots. And, you know, we try and tackle other people's addiction problems not having a lick of training of addiction problems, you know? And I, I get that mentality from when I worked in mental health mm -hmm. and like people are like, Oh, they think they're, they're, they're helping and they're, they're really not, you know, oh. there's no, they don't have the training. And so. a lot of times I'll find, you know, it's, it's that, that loved one. It's, yeah. you know, a lot of times the loved ones will get in the way of somebody getting help. Yeah. Cause they've been managing their addiction for so long that there's so much fear like, you know, I have to let Brandon go and get help, but I've been taking care of Brandon. Yeah. I've been make, making sure Brandon doesn't die. I've been making sure Brandon makes it to work on time. Right. I've been making sure that Brandon, you know, shows up for court. And you're telling me that, that Brandon's got to go away for 30 days and I might, I can't see him every day. Right. Mm. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to be there to make sure he's getting the care that he needs because I've been taking care of Brandon. Mm -hmm. right. You know, that's been my I sole focus. That. I see that. Yeah. I see how they could, yeah. So where oh, can true. where can people find, or who can they contact, well, for that step after the intervention? Like you know, who where where's a list of facilities? Where's a you know where can they reach so, out to get the information locally? We're talking on local, like level locally. Here. Yes. All right. So um, always, if you don't have insurance, if uh, you know Tennessee Redline is a great. A uh, resource. Okay. Uh, for you said Tennessee Redline. Tennessee Redline. All right, I'm gonna it? type some of this in in the comments for the for the viewers. Go ahead. 
Tennessee Red Line is a great resource. Um, Buffalo Valley is a, a state-funded facility that's in the area. I sent plenty of people to Buffalo Valley. What? I said I've sent plenty of people to Buffalo Valley, both as a prosecutor and a defense attorney. And James they, knows they everything. Are, they they uh, are really James a does. great resource. Uh, so Buffalo Valley is, is, is great. Um, there are private facilities. If you have insurance, um, there are private facilities uh, that can help you that typically always will have beds available. Okay. Now, for the, the private f- facilities, like, where do they reach out through that? Like, they're just not going to type in private facility drug rehab in Google. Like, where can they reach out? Like, I want to f- spoon feed my viewers right now on their options. Okay. <laughs> um, so there's there's some great companies. Uh, there's great companies uh, around here. There's addiction campuses, okay. uh, foundations, Journey Pure. Uh, I'm not representing anyone right now. No, no, no I, yes, Bailey. yes. So um, she's not at, here at anybody at any companies anything. I asked her herself as having. What the fuck? Ain't nobody paid nobody to be on this shit. We trying to help people. Yes, there I we understand, go. I understand, but I have a. Uh, I, yeah, it's, it's cool. No, she's a, she's got to separate yeah, herself from her. I have to separate for myself yeah. for legal. Yeah. Ain't nobody, yeah, for legal ain't nobody connected to shit. Uh, she's yeah. What else? What else do they look up? <laughs> yeah. So, so what do we? What do they need to? Like, what can they Google to find this information? So I'm just I'm gonna tell you the companies that that I, if I had a loved one, yeah, and they needed help, these mm-hmm. people I call. So I would mm-hmm. I would call. Uh, Addiction campuses. I would call Journey Pure. Journey um, Pure. I would Journey call Foundations. Pure. I hope that everybody uh, at home is also writing this down. You, you can also this. message me. I'll tell you right now. You can message me personally. My name is at the top in the little paragraph. I will do what I can to help you find help. I will do anything that I can. If you're struggling, if you have a loved one that's struggling, uh, if you just have questions, uh, about what you can do to take the next steps, I uh, I will help you. you. Do you have an email address or anything? Sure, you can email me at r e b e c c a b a i l l i e at gmail dot com. Now check that. Is that spelling correct? While you're checking that, uh, yes, he's got, got a couple questions. Go yeah, ahead, I Brandon. Got, take I got it. two of them. Um, does jail time actually help? Have you seen jail time like re- reform some like a uh, someone battling with addiction or a junkie's life? As jail time act, like does it does it actually have the uh, rehabilitative quality that they say that it does? Uh, I think it depends. On Definitely the, dries them out for it, the most yeah, part. Yeah, I think it depends on how much someone's willing to change their life while they're in jail if they're willing to take advantage of programs that are offered and most jails have some sort of program and i know for a fact that 12-step meetings both na and aa take meetings into just about every jail um so if you're if if someone is willing to take advantage of programs that are offered anyone can change their life but there are things offered it's just it's it's pretty much on the person it's it's on an individual i've seen people that have gone to jail I've seen people that have gone to prison and they've turned their lives around and they've come out and they've been sober, productive members of society. Um, um, so you think that the, so to you, the, the programs work is just the people have to work the program. Yeah. There's look, there's no one way to get clean and sober. There's mm. no perfect way. Right. It's, it's all about what works for you and, and what's going to keep you, uh, from not killing yourself with active addiction. Right. You know, there's millions of people out there that go to church and that fixed it for them. That that leads into my next question. You know, there's millions of people out there that go to 12 step meetings and that fixed it for, you know, that they worked that they did what they needed to do and and that saved their lives. And if you talk to any member, they'll be willing to tell you all about it and take you, you know, whether it's to AANA or to church. Um, it's about finding what works for you and believing that you're worth saving and getting around people that are going to love you enough until you believe yourself, you know, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm worth getting better. I'm not just the culmination of my addiction. I feel you. So, oh, go ahead. You got another part to that. Yeah. Sorry. So the, you've seen people been, uh, be able to 
clean up and straighten up their lives without rehab or intervention. Yes. So that's yeah. So I that's mean, AA awesome. and NA we have that world. And church, like, cause around. my my only thought was like church and like I feel like people need God, but NA and AA is one of those things. That, like, it's not exactly a rehab rehab facility mm-hmm. like other right things. It's just a meeting to go talk. So, it's a it's a it's a like a program of life. Like there's twelve mm, steps, right. and you know, if it works for you, good. You know, work the steps, and millions of people get clean and sober. Uh, mm. And I think it's uh, it's one of the things you know, just like just like everything. Some people beat a cold by sweating it out. Some people beat it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's one of the things that you've got to find your route, and you've got to walk it. And th- and that's why we're throwing out all these different options. You right. Know? Some people go to twelve steps for help. Some people go to twelve steps to look for a plug. Man, yeah. it's a it's a yeah. double it's a double edged sword, and it's all in the person's mind and what they intend to do with the tools they've been given. I feel you. So, yeah. and uh, go ahead, I'm Josh. Ask a real question here. Um, part of my issue the way I've always seen it with 12 step programs is the first step in surrendering to a higher power. Do you have any options for people who are atheists Uh, or people who really just do not vibe with this God idea at all? Like the idea of a higher power in the least bit, because there is some religious affiliation, no matter what you're going to do with 12 steps, because it starts first step admitting you're not in control. And there's some higher power that, Right. That is you see what I'm saying. Well, yeah. I think that you'll find that in literature, you know, there's an entire. I know in the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, there's an entire chapter written about to atheists and agnostics. Right? It's asking for a power greater than yourself, which could be the group, good orderly direction. Right. You know, it could be, it could be anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be a deity. Um, the sure. only thing that it asks you is to admit that you don't have all the answers and maybe other people do. Okay. If you mm. need to find a big motherfucker to come whip you in shape, I will gladly do that. <laughs> if you need to submit to a high five, oh, I will come yeah, get no, your no, ass. No, I'm not about <laughs> so. uh, no, and the only other thing I was wondering about, because I wanted to kind of riff on what Brandon was asking you earlier, um, about whether or not you thought jail time was beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought gen- jail time. I believe uh, that consequences are beneficial. Okay. Because I wanted to ask about That's this cool. too. Because I, like that. I have good never answer. in my, and I don't work in addiction stuff, but I work with plenty of addicts and I have, you know, both as a prosecutor and as a defense attorney. Um, I've never found incarceration to be beneficial any addict like really but let me but, jump in no, wait no let him finish let, okay let, let him finish, finish. No, please wanna, tell me more i want to finish on this yeah specifically yeah. that four crimes that were just based on possession well, not not you know crimes that are based on like they robbed somebody or whatever they right. bath salt and yeah, bit somebody's yeah, face no, off I'm talking about mm. like people who, right. who continuously get in trouble they violate probation or whatever. They right. have a simple addiction charge. That Good. Give them some consequences. But if that means you go to jail for 90 days and that gives you 90 days to think about saving your life, yeah, no, then and, you know and, what? Go to jail. Nobody I'm, gets better without consequences. Uh, I'm specifically saying that I've never seen those consequences work out in a good way. Well, hold on. I'm Most a, people I know that have done that, I've had clients that have done it and it just makes them into better criminals and then they they well, start the robbing ways. and they start doing dumb shit you and then they O D and die or or, or or they end up locked up for a long time for, you know, on robbery be a or something. Criminal. Yeah, they, they, yeah. basically they go to what I like to call, you know, prison. If you're going to prison, you're basically going to felon school. Right. You know, but felon. I right. I have to say, I've I've seen people that have gone to treatment. They've gone to treatment 13 times mm-hmm. and did not get clean and sober until they actually had to get, do some jail time and feel the consequences of what was going on. Yep, yeah, and, and I understand where you're coming from there. The, the, but that, I, I think she must that, the, the, the thrust of his question was, do you believe it's beneficial in that 
in that realm, and I just wanted to weigh in on that too because I've just never seen. I've never seen anything uh, positive come of it. If there's no initial consequences and it escalates to a point where you have to have that that legal consequence, then what's I mean, you know, what's the purpose? I, what's the point? If you're gonna go to prison for years because you got to a point that you're like selling dope in masses and yeah. it's, it's gotten out of control, like it's well, it's it's just like Paco was saying, like if you're looking for treatment, it's all about your intention. Sure, you need mm-hmm. to want to get better. Some some piece of you, whether it's through your and I'll get you. I'll do what I can to get you out of jail. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, and the, the if you're ready those, to get help, but well, well, hold on, let me let me jump in real quick. There is nothing that drives a motherfucker. And there is drugs in jail. There's Tiffany, yeah, I peep you. Yeah, I saw yeah. there's drugs in jail. Oh, yeah, for but sure. But nothing drives your ass out like jail. True. You ain't never seen a motherfucker go in for 90 days and come out just, you know what I mean? You can tell they done clean. And, you know, yeah. like one of my friends, she just, she just commented on my thing right now. She said, I got clean in jail, and she's been clean six and a half years now. That's, and that's awesome. Right. And, okay, so I see what you're saying there. Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't thinking of it more in the sense of jail. Like, you know, I was thinking more of it in long-term sentences. Right. Like, um, for example, if you're going to get into drug court in Williamson County or Davidson County or something like that, you have to be charged multiple times. You'd be looking at real time. Not like right. jail time, like in a county jail. Like a or weekender. Like TDOC prison. You're looking at at least three to four years. Right. If not more. Right. You know, um, but let's let's be honest here for just that's, a that's second. That's what happened with Gucci, man. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, my that's point with that was was that does doing an eight year stint in a TDOC prison is that really going to help you How? kill an addiction, or is that going to fuck you up in a different kind of way where you? Number one, number one, it depends on if you're a general pop or max. Yeah. <laughs> Gen pop or max, where very you at? True, true. But number two, for me, here's the deal with it. And let's be real here, okay? I'm going to be really real. Brandon, I feel like you're not saying what you want to say. I, I take the hat off. Wah! Say what you want to yeah, say. But Brandon let me say this first. Yeah. Let's say this first. Most motherfuckers that go to jail that are hardcore addicts and junkies are not there for drugs no, number they did, one they did some fuck shit yeah they done they done stole some shit they yeah, done they, fucking yeah, did some yeah. shit now hold on number two the people you're referring to are selling drugs that are no. doing those long stints uh most uh, let me uh, yeah go ahead go ahead go ahead most, most heroin addicts for example specifically all sell drugs uh once you're really into it you're not going to get caught as a heroin addict with, like, under a gram or something. That's very rare and random. Right. You Maybe you, if that happens, you pass out at the wheel or something. You had an accident. You right. Shit. You nodded out. Normally, and... though, you are facilitating drug deals because it's m- making you money so you can buy more heroin. You're ripping other people off that you've got addicted to heroin. And, you know, you're in possession of three or four grams Cops are watching you. You're caught up in the trade. Now, with that being said, are we not talking about taking those people off the street for X amount of time? You're asking, what is that helping by taking a dealer off the street? Uh, No, I'm asking, does it help the addict who, not the dealer, because, I mean, the real dealers are people like Cartel. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, but that's a whole other level. Yeah, we're not. I mean, it's not a far jump. No, it's it's not. But I don't think that's what the podcast is about right now. Right, we're talking about addicts. We're not talking talking about about cartels that that, that are that are going to get caught up. Yeah, when you get caught with four or five grams of heroin, selling it, and really you're just but you have you have multiple levels of before you get to that point. Right. Yeah, but and there's you're not look, James. Look, you are. I know you're a lawyer, and I know. You know way more about the law than I do. But typically there are several interventions that are going to happen before you're walking around with five grams of dope trying to t- sell it to somebody. And not doing it. Sure. And, you know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah, and, I don't and, mean you're not doing it. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Like there's, you know, people have talked to you about it. You've lost your job. You lost your home. You've lost your family. You've lost all of these things. If it takes for you to save your life to go to jail for six months. Awesome. I mean, then that right. needs to happen. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. 
and I apologize. I may have gotten some confusion there. Go ahead, Brandon. What you, what do you got? You look like you got all kind of shit on your mind. I just want to know how to uh, what's the most um, average way for somebody to get addicted to heroin or uh, meth. How does it get there? Yeah, like what's the what what is the Two the most ways, the I'm most common there, entry like level that. gateway into heroin and meth? So for heroin, it it was the influx in the prescribing of opioids okay. so we talked about that so you we have did. the influx in the prescribing of we, we had a, a pendulum swing right? right at one point in time we did not medicate pain right then like the 80s and the in the early 90s especially mm-hmm. for women okay uh pain wasn't medicated properly cancer all of that wasn't medicated properly right. pharmaceutical companies came out and they said we can help the pain we got this right and then the pendulum swung way, way, way far to the right, where this was a cure-all. We're going to prescribe it for everybody's pain. Oversaturation? A, oversaturation of the market. And uh, specific, what, around, around what time did that pendulum swing, what you said? I, I think that it swung probably in the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, that's accurate. Around uh, 2001. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and so when that pendulum swung, you found these doctors that opened up uh, these clinics you know, and the and I believe personally and in, to my core that there is a place for pain management. There is a place place for pain management. You will never find me saying, you know, get rid of everything entirely. Mm. You'll never find me saying that because I won't swing that pendulum all the way back. back. Uh, all the way back. Right. Um, but you had clinics that opened up, and you could. I know there was one here in Columbia where you could walk in with a twelve year old X ray and say. I still have pain. And you write that doctor a check, and that doctor wrote you for a prescription. Right. And you had a bunch of people that were overly medicated, and when that, when those pills became too expensive or harder to get, you are physically, you are already hurting, you're addicted, and heroin is cheaper. All right, so when there's such a... Uh, because when you say there's a saturation in the market and overpopulate over... Uh, prescription of, of drugs being um, given so when when they dry up and when they fix that issue of uh, pharmaceuticals over the counter then what this the heroin market that is like boom nationwide oh most definitely like, that is so, a result of but but who facilitates that who like what is the like we're talking locally and I'm just gonna say it biker gangs like just moved here like is like what are who are the facilitators to get into a market that is now dried the hell up? Like, is that just a street gang thing? Is that a cartel thing? Like, like James said, is that a is that a a they they're getting it from other pharmacies and clinics in like another state and bringing them in or like what is, like how is it how how is it so quickly able to be like as soon as this there's a dip off here. It just seemed this transition well, to the, the, the transition. There, there was no is, like is easy. drought. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was, so like, the, the transition personally is easy. It, that that's easy because you're gone from being addicted to these pills, right? Right. And pills are typically you're selling a, a pill for a dollar a milligram. So if you have a thirty milligram oxy pill, right? right. That's a that's thirty dollars. Right. But I can get you know a, a bag of heroin for ten bucks. Right. So when but that, how do you find that's what I'm how saying? Do you find how it? does it become so readily available? Because like they prescribe the need. fuck out of me with Adderall and Vyvanse, but you never with, wanted with, to do meth. Not like even if I wanted to, even if I couldn't, if I, if I didn't have it anymore, I wouldn't know the phone call to me. You know what I'm saying? Like how does it, how was it so readily? I'm not like, gonna tell people on a podcast I'm saying, how to get drugs. No, but I'm saying no, like, <laughs> Thank like you. there was. I was about to say, don't answer that question. No, but I'm, <laughs> no, but I'm saying like. Like, how was there not a dip off? There was like a perfect timing of what is now. Now prescriptions are gone. Boom! Here's your substitute. He's you know saying, saying the transition was so quick and so smooth. Like, is this, like who? Who? How the fuck do you plan? Who this got shit? the memo? How yes. did the memo? Who got get, the memo? Okay. Yeah, That's like how did they get the memo? Oh, we're cut. To that a little bit better. I don't know if you know the answer to that. I'm gonna let James handle this one. Um, the cartel was there, ready to move. They were well, moving pills first. No, we're talking about 
on a like local, on a, a yeah, local level because uh, water look, seeks that itself. Shit, well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Water so. seeks its level, yeah, right? Exactly. You can go into any bar and start drinking and you meet a new friend. Hey, new friend, how are you doing? Yeah, no. Nope. Blah, 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 blah. You know, and, and oh, I got a backache. The, the cartel was already moving these pills when you they know? became readily available. They were stealing them from pharmacies and doing different shit and stopping shipments of you know mm. like trucks and stealing whole trucks full they created the the, the 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 but, but they didn't urgency really create it. no really the pharmaceutical companies created it no i'm saying but, the the urgency for like they would stop whole trucks take it and they're like yeah, but well the once these all sell out i mean now that the pharmaceutical company ain't got it no more it's this, always going to be a this rise of, of the the you know uh the popularity of opioids all right heroin was still a thing that shit right. still existed. Right. The cartel still trafficked in that. Right. The That's cartel right just now. wasn't as visible and we didn't know as much about them. They weren't as big a thing. As much because we had the pharmaceuticals as a veil. existed and been in circulation in America. Forever. Well, we know for about Frank 40, Lucas. 50 years. Yeah. The thing is, is that, you know, you can get black tar heroin. Like she was saying, it's a shitload cheaper than come on Oxy's. All right, but you know, and, and you just want to know how you go from oh my gosh, I'm out of my oxycodone. How do I get heroin? And you, well, not to, only to now I'm walking around with Narcan because but, my friend but, but was just prescribed because, the same shit as me, look, and now he's dead. Thing. So how the fuck am I still here and he's gone? You we are, both knew the same people. You're learning, That's all I'm trying to figure out. You're okay. learning about. I'm just, so I'm gonna stop you right now, and I'm gonna recognize you what you're what you're saying right now. Yeah, I'm just confused. How did there's there's how did we both go that way? Because you got those, there's anger right there, and there's mm. hurt, and and you lost somebody that you love, right? Yeah, I'm just lost. I'm just kind of like trying to figure out how how was it when we both ran out of pills. I was like, well, I'm out of pills now. I guess that's just the life I have to deal with. And yeah, it sucks, but then you get over it. And how did he find I'm out of pills, and now I'm doing heroin? Like I don't I don't get how he was so how was he so readily available? It just seems like. They knew ahead of time. It just seems like there was a. And when a he says they up. knew ahead of time, he's talking about heroin dealers. Not, yeah, not we right. knew. Yeah, no, like it just right. seems like like they were like, all right, they're gonna run out next week, ramp up production. Because you know what I'm saying? It's always <laughs> like, there. Yeah. Because it's always there, and it's lying under the surface. And your loved one met somebody who probably got him more pills when his prescription ran out, and when those pills weren't available. That same friend or had a friend of a friend knew how to get dope. Yep. And he probably said to himself, I'm never going to shoot it. I'm just going to snort it because I'm sick. Yep. And he probably said, I'm not going to do it anymore just until I find more pills. This will be the only time I do this. And but it's just that easy. But then it just continues from there, even though he said it. he was never going to do it. Yep. And that's the thing. Is that and there, hey, there was nothing that you could have done to stop it. That's something. I just ain't figured it out yet. And, but that's mm -hmm. what she's saying is absolutely true. I mean, that's yeah. the real thing. It's just it was fast it's as not shit. That it How fast moving. was it? It was just it was just fast. It was it was it was too damn fast. It was it was it was so fast it wasn't enough time. Did you know? Yeah, but like it was just wasn't enough time. It was just fast. It, people die fast. Like they that's do. what's confusing the fuck out of me. I'm like, really, it's just a really fast good. thing. I've I've lost a lot of friends over the years, and I've lost a lot of patients. Yeah, it's and, just it, it's and confusing. And you don't see it coming, and it nah. And it's it's, and the way that you feel right now, is the way that parents and loved ones are feeling all over this country right now. Yeah, I just, and that's what I'm saying. Like that's why, like like since we have like people with more knowledge and everything, like I just want to make sure I'm asking all the questions that other people don't have a good opportunity to ask. Like, because no one teaches us. Like, right? This nah. is not a class that you take in high school. Hell no. Nah. Like, how do I deal with addiction? Mm -mm. Like, we don't. Right. They just tell you don't do drugs. They just tell you <laughs> don't do drugs. Yeah. And, okay. like and then they show you how to do them. Yeah, right. But tell you not <laughs> to do them. Yes. The, <laughs> the only thing I'm mind blowing. The only thing I'm going to today is that when you run out of the drugs prescribed to you, for example, if that's what you're talking about. Right. You knew somebody to get pills from, though, right? They legally, you know, like, uh, buy them. Buy them you know, well, yeah, at, at a, a certain that's point. That's exactly what happens. Is the guy who had the pills or whoever knew the dude who had the dope. It's and a, it was it's just a, a crossover. It's like, I can't, you know, you're begging somebody who really, you know, you mm. said, 
okay, I'm out of pills, fuck it, you know, withdrawal suck, I'm gonna go deal yeah, with Yeah, I just that. gotta deal with this. But, you know, your dude is begging, dude. <laughs> yeah. The guy, like, you know, you don't got pills, what do I do? And he's like, well, I know somebody who can Who knows somebody that, that can yep. get you and some And that's milk. what happens. It's, it's not, it's not that heroin just as, became just more readily simple. available, it's that heroin became more popular. The heroin, the demand for heroin, available. yeah, the demand went up. Like, right. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but that makes sense. The man was always there. It's just that now we're in a whole different. They built the audience with the opiate crisis, overprescribing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they built the the need for it, and then they cracked down on the regulations and shit with it, yeah, and cracked down in this too. area, yeah. snatched it up, dried the area. So then the demand went up. And unfortunately, and here we then, are. When they dropped all those regulations, uh, they didn't. They didn't give you more treatment. They didn't they even just, have a plan for the people. And left. one of the things that you know, and one of the things that like really sucks about it is that you know the fortunate thing, and many people will disagree with me, and and I don't really care because I'm here representing myself. Um, is you have medicated assisted therapy now, so you're seeing more. Uh, Suboxone outpatient oh treatment centers pop yeah. up yeah. than you see than you're seeing. How actual. do you feel about Suboxone? Look, if it keeps you from killing yourself, if Suboxone keeps you from putting a needle in your arm or oh. snorting a shit ton of oxy up your nose, okay. Well, let me ask you this though: I have seen people go like they get on Suboxone for uh, you know for treatment, and then. They're worse off on the Suboxone as they were what they were doing. I seen a girl operate for 10 years on Lord tabs and everything. Excelled at her job. Got on Suboxone and turned into a bumbling fool. How much Suboxone is she taking? People are abusing the fuck out of Suboxone. Right. I know. Yeah. I, I know, but people are going to abuse... People are going to abuse methadone. Yeah. Right? Like, if right. you don't have it inside of you to want or live a different life right if mm. to change the core inside right. it doesn't matter what band-aid you put on it right, right. you know right. it, it doesn't matter what band-aid if you want to get better because really it's a spiritual thing yeah. it, it really is a spiritual thing part of the disease of addiction is i hate myself Right. And I and I and I don't deserve to get better. I don't deserve to get clean and sober because I'm just a fucking junkie, you know. Uh, or I'm just a fucking alcoholic and I'm gonna be a drunk for fucking ever. Yeah. And this is who I am. You and I surrender. and I'm never gonna get any better. That mm -hmm. is, we can put, we can give people suboxone, we can give people methadone, we can put people in treatment, but really it comes down to fundamentals of changing someone's insides. Mm -hmm. It comes down to, you know, putting what's broken in here, whatever that is, it's different from every for every and every individual, right? Mm. To give somebody some coping mechanisms, to give somebody that, you know, whatever's missing, finding a way to give it back to you. Or right. maybe you never felt like you had it in the first place. All right. So can there be like a big massive community AA meeting? Is that possible? Do do those happen? Like a big massive community AA meeting? No, because yeah, like, uh, like some people are like, I don't even want to hear anything about God, so that's why this isn't going to work for me. Oh, yeah. See, you can't slap AA on I mean, there's also, you, you, you have to label it something like... Uh, there's also scientific studies to say the 12-step program but, is not helpful for uh, Let's not get into But I think that's, like I said, it's it's different for everybody. Everybody gets something different, and it's about what's ever missing here, what you're going to do to fix it. Some people get really into working out. Yeah. And that becomes their spiritual experience. And right. that is what helps them. And they never touch drugs again because now my body is a temple. Right, right. Well, I don't care what it is. I don't care what you're doing really to fix it as long as you're not harming yourself or harming anybody else anymore. Right. So, I think you'd, you'd probably want to label it like a community reach. Community reach. Or, you know what I mean? Or some sort of... You have to stay away from AA and NA, you know, because essentially those 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 are nonprofit companies. It's not a com. Is that not company? Not a company. Okay. That's not a company. Uh, okay, no, I didn't know. I thought the twelve step order. and all that. No, was... no, 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 no. Right. No, there's like traditions that go through to make sure that nobody profits off it. Nobody yeah. makes any money. That's what I'm saying. We, we don't represent it's a, it's anything. A but you can. But what That's you what can I said. do, you know, what you can do is 
take the message back to your people. Yeah. Like whether or not you're you go to church, whether or not, you know, it's it's your union family, you know, you know, whatever it is, that there are people that can help you and there's a way that you can support people and you know, to, to remove the the shame stigma from, stigma from it. Mm-hmm. That's that's right. really the big thing. No matter what community that you're involved in, like whoever your people are, right. you know, we can't yell at people to get better anymore because that that doesn't work for cancer. Right. You right. know, you can't be like, you know, fuck you, cancer. Okay, I just need you to stop having cancer now. Okay. Right, yeah, right. It doesn't work. It's not gonna work. But you know, when we remove the stigma from addiction and say you got you're sick, you're sick. And then you, know, you can step forward. Then like, you can step forward. As long as you got that first. All right, so big community confessional. <laughs> Not <laughs> confessional. Uh-huh. You, you stirred back into religion, dude. Uh-huh. <laughs> part of the problem is that when we talked about, when you were talking about Suboxone and whatnot, yeah. uh, methadone and everything else, is that it was looked at as a Band-Aid. It's kind of a way to treat addiction with another drug that people start abusing. Um my issue with it is, is that now pain clinics don't hand out oxy. They right. hand out suboxone. That's not true. A lot of pain clinics that's, do. That's not true. In the state of Tennessee, uh, you have to be a psychiatrist in order to write for suboxone. A mm. pain management, a pain management doctor's office cannot write for suboxone. A, a, a do, a, 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 you have to have special licensing. In order to write for Suboxone, but, but a pain clinic. management a pain management clinic cannot write for Suboxone, even if it does treat pain, because you? of the way that the state uh, laws are set up. Does can a pain management clinic employ a psychiatrist? That I'm not sure of. I mean, I, I think if they could, but in the state of Tennessee, I mean, the there way are that three in Columbia that do actually. But, when that I mean that's good. I, I mean I'm not saying it's not, but I'm saying that not every what I mean is like not every doctor, not every MD that can write even at a pain clinic that can write for uh, oxy, they cannot write for suboxone even if it does treat pain. But that's a hell of a work on yeah. and like that's the that's the thing though. Like there's always a fucking a legal around. yeah, there's always a legal loophole to just ensure and that they, you can so continue fucking somebody So they tried in this last up. legislative season in the state of Tennessee, they tried to bring forth a bill saying that if you can legally write for um, narcotics, you should be able to write for Suboxone too. Mm-hmm. Because you have a lot of these rural communities you know, that don't have a treatment center. That doesn't ha- they don't have a psychiatrist. Mm. They don't have it, but they can walk into uh, their doctor's office, their nurse practitioner's office, and they can say to them, look, I need help. Yeah. I'm addicted to opiates. Can you write me for Suboxone? They should be able to do that. The problem is, is that that's abuse. And like I just said, there are three pain clinics in Columbia that prescribe Suboxone and they hand it out like fucking candy. <laughs> See, so like, all right. I, 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 I imagine they have is, like is it a Is it a possibility that Suboxone, the company, is just paying pharmacists, or uh, not think, pharmacists, paying mirror, psychiatrists to sign and write it off? Because then like, uh, it will, other it drug companies just pay doctors to, to prescribe shit? So wouldn't Suboxone just pay like psychiatrists you know, This is a great question shit. for my sister who is a pharmacist. But, I mean, uh, you can do... They do different things, but... So, well, so, so Suboxone uh, has Narcan in it. Mm-hmm. So what Suboxone does is if you're taking a daily regimen of Suboxone and you try to take an opioid, mm. it's not going to do anything. What do they call it? Mm. It's an opioid blocker. Mm. Okay, yeah. but you have so you can be on both. But you said no. it's such an immediate withdrawal, right? Narcan does. Narcan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, what they call an opioid inhibitor. So right? when you have... but you And then there's also Subutext. Too, which is attaches to the opioid centers in the brain, but you can still get high. Mm. So it just doesn't What's have the name of that one? Subutext. Subutext. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Subutext. You can still get high. It just what wings you off or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you typically want to prescribe people. You would want to prescribe people Suboxone because that does have the uh, Narcan, the opioid inhibitor in it. But it's still mm-hmm. so they can't it still use it. Does have like a. An opioid issue. Well, effect. it attaches to the opioid receptors in your brain. So I mean, it does so give you that. I mean, it's not like it's anabuse. We use anabuse for alcohol. If you take anabuse, you're taking anabuse, and then you try to drink alcohol, you're throwing up all over the place. Right. Sure. Uh-huh. So let's let's reel this back a little bit because 
we're not a debate podcast here. We debate a little bit, but right now that's not what we're trying to do. So, um, no, you're fine. Um, Rebecca, yes. uh, we're hitting almost a two hour mark here. And my uh, boyfriend is wanting to know when I'm coming home. Oh, uh, so the boyfriend said, "What up?" Wait He's a minute. hungry. Wait a minute. What up? <laughs> tell the boyfriend what I what I what I what's up man that man who used to learn to cook Ooh. oh my man cooks uh oh I just promised I'd bring home Popeyes tonight oh, <laughs> oh, oh you about to be disappointed no oh you about to be mad no oh you not getting no chicken sandwich uh, uh, no no that chicken sandwich is bingo take us out take us out so look thing. so look let's Rebecca if <laughs> Give us just the fast rundown of information that we need to hand out to these people. Like, just a, just a quick recap of everything we've kind of talked about for either a loved one or a or an addict here. You know, we've got a couple places we've said to contact to get help. But could get, give us just a fast rundown. Just five minutes if they're watching. Okay. Where do you want me to look? Uh, just no. You oh here you your camera, camera. Your camera is here. Where's my camera? It, you're right here. That's me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There you go. All right. If you have a loved one or you yourself you're seeking help and you're afraid, that's okay. Because we all live in some sort of state of fear. Um, you can reach out uh, if you don't have insurance. There's Tennessee Redline. Um, you can reach out to state funded programs like Buffalo Valley. Um, you can go to your doctor if you have a doctor. Um, if you put in treatment in the internet, I'm sure that you'll find a million treatment centers. But the point is, is don't not ask for help. If you really want help, if you really need to get help, it is available. Just don't give up on yourself. Uh, again, don't do an intervention unless you have a bed in a treatment center ready. Um, that's really important. There are professional interventionists out there that you can use. Uh, they're 90, your loved one's 95% more likely to go into treatment. Um, but don't give up. If you need help, there are people that will help you. I promise you that. All right. Brandon, you got anything? You want to follow any of that? Um, they're fucking us. You're over here right now. Whatever. <laughs> They're fucking us. We're screwed from all angles. If you want to get help, get help. If you don't want to get help, you're fucked. Uh, man, just pray. Just have God. Just find something you love and just fucking love it as much as you can. Um, Keep trying. Yeah. There's different don't stuff. Stop trying. Like if it's just, if it just seems like everything got a goddamn a catch to it, like a motherfucker. So man, just just stay strong. And I don't know. Come to shut up and eat. <laughs> yeah. like this this just seems like like whatever route you go, there's a, a little right. trip or obstacle for you. So just we gotta throw strong. we gotta throw hope out there. Right? Well, man, let just me stay strong. Like, I don't really know there, about no hope. There, I can be realistic, man. Even when you're down. using, there's a caveat. It's when you're using too, right? Yeah. It's, so it's, it's regardless. It's, if you put as much energy into getting help as you do to get getting high, you will get help and you will get better. That I promise you. Yeah. But it's not hopeless, and I know that you're hurting, and I there's nothing I can do to take that away from you. There's nothing I can't say shit. Uh, it's just confusing but to me. It's it's, con it's it sucks. It's, yeah. So but I just don't like things that don't make sense, and this whole situation doesn't make sense. Uh, they because it, it's it's all young people that's dying. I don't want to say all, but the ones that I know, the ones that I see, the ones that that are dying around here locally. The, to my knowledge, are young people that are my age or most most average younger. So and I know I, it's not because we're just some fucking junkies. It's because they told us we had ADHD. It's because they told us something was wrong with us. because they told us we had some shit that we've never seen any proof of before. Before we were born, they, all, they told us all that we were fucked up, that there was something wrong. We couldn't concentrate, so they put us on a whole bunch of shit. And then once we got old enough and we were done and we passed all the little state mandated tests and we got out of their fucking schools and they didn't need the drug us up to make us sit still anymore. They didn't care if we had withdrawals. And then we got addicted to shit that could kill us. And now we're fucking dying. So just stay strong. Endurance breeds greatness. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs>
keep trying. Um, <laughs> if this route doesn't work, if working <laughs> out doesn't crazy. work, go to treatment. Treatment doesn't work, go to 12 step. 12 step doesn't work. Got it. Some people art. Some people finding themselves. Just keep trying. That's what I did. I found art for real. Yeah. So just keep I trying. Stop doing trying. art. Don't no. ever stop trying. Stop and, using. Keep trying. And don't be afraid to confront your loved one. Like if you're sitting there and you have all the signs that you know your kid is using and you don't oh get some help before the bad shit starts happening. Right. Stop right there. Yeah. What signs. Are what are signs that they need you to look for? You want some signs? Okay. Yeah. Um. They can't keep a job. They can't hold a job. They're always asking you for money. You keep catching them in lies. Every time you turn around, you said you're supposed to be at so-and-so's house. I haven't seen you in four days. You know, if you find drugs on your child, your child is using drugs. They, they're not holding it, to it for a friend. Nobody holds dope for a friend. Don't listen to them. Okay, I know that parents, if you're out there and you're watching this, you might not want to believe that your kids are in trouble, but they are. And you can't ignore it, and you can't pray it away. You have to get your loved one help. You have to intervene. If, if you're going to know when there's something wrong with your kid. You know, that you will Follow know. your gut. Follow your gut. Moms, you know your kids. And as much as it sucks... To have to confront this kind of problem, confront it before your kids die. Okay? It's scary, but there are people like myself that are there to walk you through it. Um, but don't don't believe it. Don't, you know, an addict is always going to lie. They're in a constant state of lying. That's what we do. Okay? If you find dope on your kids, they're using dope. Okay? If they're running around with people and... Joey's best friend overdosed, you know, two days ago. You better believe that Joey's probably using with them, too. Mm. Okay. Yes, and and people, you have to, you do have to change your, your crowd. Look, here. my mother just said they fall down the stairs. Uh, Thanks, Mom. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Damn. So, mom, you do I'm have to not on drugs. Crowd. I just have bad equilibrium. No, my, okay. my mom's watching right now. So, my yeah. mom, is, she's watching right now. Yeah, right. Tell my mom. Like, <laughs> I just have bad balance. I am not on anything. Right. She's like, I saw what the woman said on the podcast. Uh, you're, falling, you're falling down. You lost your damn job twice. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, you must have been on hair when you were 13. You ain't, you've been falling over ever since. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> so look, y'all y'all do have to change your crowd though. You can't you can't go get treatment and come out and go sit with your same buddies no, you were doing hair wrong with. You know? It's just not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. You gotta recognize your support too. Like even if you're without family and friends and stuff and you actually like feel alone, like beyond the NA and AA community, like yeah. beyond. Like there are people who can relate to the exact path you're walking. Yeah. And that's not what your loved ones necessarily can do they may not be able to relate to exactly what you're going right. through. they just want you to get better but don't understand the struggle of the withdrawals and so on so yeah. don't let your kids use drugs in the house okay i don't know who i'm talking to right now but you're probably out there all right yeah they are out there just just because your kid is getting high in your house it doesn't make it okay. You're not keeping them safe. What you're going to do is you're going to come home and find your kid dead in the bedroom one day. In your house. In your house. Yeah. Okay? And he's not going to the milkman or the ice cream man to get dope. All right? You're still bringing shit in your house. Don't do that. Don't pay off the dope man. If, if, if your kids come to you and they're like, oh, my God, I, I owe $500 to the dope man. Don't look at your son and go, this is the last time. And then go pay the dope man off. That's mm. not going to stop him from using drugs. Uh, dope, dope man's, man's not going to still going to give yeah. your kid drugs. Yeah. Right. Well, also, the dope man ain't going to kill you for five hundred dollars. It depends. But it depends no. on the dope man. It depends yeah. on the city. But the, but the point being is, you're still paying off the dope man, and that uh, dope man cool. knows that I can still give this kid drugs, and I'm still going to get my money. So, yeah. don't do that. Don't pay the dope man. Mm. Okay, y'all. We have <laughs> surpassed our two hour mark. <laughs> So November 9th, shut Jay. up and ink. You'll see the beautiful Kim there doing what she loves to do. What? what? And she yeah, is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, you're beautiful. 
<laughs> See, we can't compliment Rebecca her old man's watching. So <laughs> I think he stopped watching a long time. Uh, uh, oh look, she's like, giving them compliments. Oh, <laughs> uh, such a such a night. <laughs> so uh, yeah, November 9th be there. It's an all day event, man. Pop in, pop out. You know, get you a couple t-shirts and some food from the food trucks. Yeah, just you come know? by and see what's going on. Yeah. Check us out. Have to be yeah. There. yeah. So come to the after party. Get fucked up with us. Oh, hey. but not. Fucked up like we were just talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much all day. If you got any charges or some shit, come talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> DUI lawyer will be on premises. So. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, the advice ain't free. Yeah, yeah. Free, so yeah. Yeah. Sure but to come to the event, it is free. It is oh, free. FYI, Maybe my mom loves y'all, uh, by the way. Yeah, hey, subscribe. Hey. Go to your podcast sites. Give us five stars. Subscribe. And. And hit the donate button. Now you take the words right out. Yeah, or become a patron. Boom. So we needs that. But um, yeah, guys, you got anything for us? Um, been a long week. Been a cool week. Can't wait to finish this week up so we can get get on the shut up and eat. Can't wait to see all y'all. Uh, hit us up. Like. Please put some more funny videos on the page. Like, I like yeah. those. Those are yeah. cool. <laughs> so if y'all find any funny-ass videos throughout the week and you think about us or you want us to look at them or talk about them on the podcast, uh, just put the link on the Facebook page so we can check them out. We like seeing those. Um, other than that, stay strong. Endurance breeds greatness. So just keep on fighting the good fight and right. don't give up. Uh, love yourself. Yes. And yeah. take the rest from there. Thank you, Rebecca, for coming on. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Yeah. Thank you, Kim, for, yeah. for Thank gracing you. us with your beauty. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank James, you, James, for joining you're us too. Welcome. Coming through again, man. Yeah, we're gonna, you know, we'll plug some stuff. You could always, if you're if you're inclined on the political end, you can always check uh, out our podcast, at fermentingopinions dot com. You can look us up on fermenting opinions. Uh, Whatever podcast uh, service you use, right. Apple, uh, Beyond Pod, all that stuff. You can find and that's stuff fermenting opinions. Yeah, fermenting opinions. Yeah, so. uh, yes. We got a page. We got a public Facebook page. We've got an actual like uh, closed group or whatever. If you actually want to get in there and really debate politics, yeah. Okay. okay. I can't even fuck with them because they be so serious, <laughs> and I just be so Man. not. Fucking serious. <laughs> that's that's you the fun. Try moderating that right. shit. That's yeah, cool. I come in. Everybody, everybody in there is so serious about shit. Yeah. yeah. It I'm used to be like, a lot more fun where you could just like somebody would say something, you could be like your mom. Yeah. And they yeah. get really mad and like your mom. Well, and my favorite. Mad. And then James had to start like moderating, and then you can't. You do had that to anymore. though. You had yeah, to get PC. Yeah, you had to put in rules. Like, man, my rules just keep. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> you know, the entire point of that little discussion group was so that everyone could debate under civil rules of debate. Don't nope. be insulting each other. Nope. Yeah, that. you want to insult Donald Trump, whatever, that's cool. No one gives a shit. Donald Trump ain't I on the page. Right. But don't, don't, don't insult just, somebody just who has angry, an opinion. They yeah. just get more angry and I, I would laugh. I would just, I like, bomb you all with... Bernie Sanders memes and then go away. No, they banned memes. I think. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. You can get around that. Okay. Go ahead and drop All right. That. I gotta go. <laughs> you gotta go. Look. I gotta go. All right, y'all. Well, Welcome uh, to the mothership. We was live. Can't wait to see you again. <laughs> All right, homie. Who that? Who that? You're now rocking with DJ. Who that? There's nothing around. It's gotta be my imagination. I think it's in the face. You have fun. I think it's in the face. DJ Skinny. They not for right. Let's go. Who that? 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 Who that?